Fournier. We'll be looking at the goalies in a matter of seconds. There you have Dan Bouchard, absolutely brilliant against the Canadians. In quality, yes, against Boston, but not in quantity. He missed four games. And there's Smith. Don, I understand he's been just so so. Well, Billy Smith's one of those goaltenders. After the game, you say he didn't play very good, but he comes up with that big save at the right time. And that's the difference. There's some goaltenders, you say, he played a great game, but they lost. Is there such a thing as a goaltender being categorized as a money player? Well, I always did. I thought Cheevers was the best one that I ever saw, except against Montreal. Now this game is underway. And it is Mora clearing it to the line. Rashford knocked it into the center ice area, stepping gingerly in over the line. It felt it there. Was Stasny Peter. That solid body check was by Potvin. He's been lukewarm, I understand. But remember Dick Irvin last year, how he came into his own, particularly in that series against Edmonton. Number five, Potvin took over. Well, he got that hat trick that night. You and I were here, Danny, a great show. There is Brian Trotcher. Just take another look at the opening part of this hockey game. And here is Potvin, hip check on Peter Stastny. Down he goes. Pretty good start for Potvin. He is a big man for New York. Quick well, change here, Don, after only 20 seconds. Right, a little games, little games. So you'll notice that Tonelli is out there with Mary and Nystrom for the Islanders. Langevin is on defense. There's Weir bubbling at the line by Nystrom. That is Langevin going in there, and he's taken in on the boards with authority by Hunter. Let's see what goes on here. Is it a matter of the glass? The stick that's hot in the glass, Danny. Right stick there. Look at this. I've never seen that. That's what happens when you hit. Well, I remember Montreal one night, Dick, somebody got their stick in the board. Remember? They, yes. As they pulled the stick out, and they almost hauled down the end of the rink. You know, they have those. There are some little holes in the glass. You can see it there, but I don't think that was the case. I think it went right through the, the hinge there or whatever. Well, here's another solid jolt by the Islanders on Wally Weir as Bob Nystrom stepped into him at the Quebec Blue Line. Weir got up laughing. He knew he shot his head down. Well, it looks like the uh, Al's told him what to do. Go out, take the body right away. Let me ask you this, Don, very early in the series. Do you think it's over-emphasized, over-accentuated, this matching line? I sure do, and I'll tell you why. I think what happens is that you get so concerned about the other team, you forget your own game. Now, I can see if you have a guy on Lafleur, or if you want to put Casper on Gretzky, that's different. But to put whole lines and to be worried in 20 seconds, guys changing on the fly, what I think is it throws your game off. In other words, that is a negative approach. Well, when you go in thinking that way, I always said, do your own thing and you'll win the hockey game. Don't worry about the other guys. Now the face-off in New York territory. There's no score in the hockey game. You see number 27, Canelli going over to the far side of that circle. We have Pichette playing up. And what a tremendous series he had against the Boston Bruins. Langevin in behind the net. Merrick is turning from the corner. Where will that pass go? It'll go off the board. Out to Merrick into the center ice area. Over on this far side. Canelli puts on the brakes. Nystrom is getting in front. There's Merrick with it. They jostle in front of that. Merrick sending it right out in front. A shot, not too much on that by Canelli. Now here comes the Nordique. Suche over the other side. And number 16. That below number 16. Keep your eye on him, Goulet. Now coming in on the left side, Hunter. It's swept off the stick by Nystrom. So sit back, relax. Adjust your seat belt because I think the takeoff we have here is stormy and turbulent. It looks like they're going to hit. Well, Cloutier's going after the whole team down there. That's a surprise. I'll tell you, they're, uh, they're hitting, and these are solid clean checks at center ice, which you don't see much of anymore. They're trying to hurt one another. Our viewers have come to know the Nordiques very well, and looking back to the game two nights ago in Boston, there is one change in the Quebec lineup. Mario Merrois on defense is not playing. He has a knee problem. Michel Bolduc, who has been playing for Fredericton this past year in the American Hockey League, is in uniform tonight for the Nordiques. So the face-off to the right. 
He'd be called Daniel. He doesn't want Danny. I thought Danny would be all right. The false start in the face off. We have Randy Muller out there right now, the youngster up from Lethbridge. He was in uniform, Don, for Game 7 in Boston two nights ago, but did not get on the ice. And there he is. What a spot for a kid right out of junior hockey to play for the first time in the NHL. Well, Michel Bergeron thinks he's a big kid. That's what he wants. Now there's Bourne playing it to the side of the net, and it's swept away by DuPont. Over on the far side, Porque was bumped there by Lane and knocked to the ice. And the Islanders so far winning in the battle of laying on the body. But the Nordiques will not. You know, back up a bit. They clear it into New York territory, and there goes Potvac. Poké is moving in. He tried to knock it down in front. The Islanders coming up. Down on the left side, Bourne. And a call. Let's see. We have Moeller and Bourne. Tough family. Mike plays for Buffalo. Nobody fools around with any one of them, Dick. Everybody get in on the act just briefly. No further damage done. Here we see it. Bourne coming down on the left side. And this was the aftermath after Bourne had got rid of the puck. He's up outside the line. This is going to be a tough series. Would you proffer a number of games that will go in the oh. eventual winner? Not after I picked Calgary, Dad. <laughs> Now it's Trottier coming in on the right side against Dupont. Dupont cleared it to the far side, pouncing on it is Bourne. He's belted on the boards by Muller into the center ice area. Peter Sasky over the line. He's coming in on that right side. Rolled it, and it's cleared behind the net. Number 19 is Cote. Number 18 is Marion. Sasky. Long right wing pass coming in on that right side. There's a Taking that wink wide pass, Bossy. They say he has a bad knee. In comes Potvin over to Bossy. He dropped it back. Here's Gilly swinging around. And Peter Stasny moving up and crisscrossing across the line. It is Brother Marion. Now, Captain Potvin into the center ice area. Over the line. Josh Moore playing it back to Therian. Long pass. No score in this hockey game so far. Three minutes and ten seconds have been played there. Tried it by Scott. He was being checked there by Morrow. Didn't get very much on the shot. Pouncing onto that center. Carry on. Took a pass from Rossmore. Tried it up on the left side. A solid body belt there by Morrow on Anton Stasny. Here's Gilly. Into the center ice area it goes. The Akulin is over the line. was sort of put it out chest level, not over the shoulder. The Islanders are upset, and we haven't had an official call yet, but the puck went in the net, down and through the legs, Don, of Billy Smith. All right, take a look at it here. The goal is not going to count. No goal. Let's see why. Oh, I don't know. That's pretty close, Dick. I don't know. I don't know on that one. I think that was a goal, if you're asking me my opinion. Let's see this play. I could be wrong. See, I don't think his stick... He thought maybe thought it was Tardif. That's what they thought it was Tardif touched the puck, but it was Paymont. Well, did he touch the puck? That's the point. Well, regardless, you're not counting. He checked with the linesman on the play. That was... Uh, Hood didn't make the decision right away. There is Bergeron. He was at the gate over at the Quebec bench, and he is upset, obviously, for good reasons. Still no score. So the faceoff is outside the New York line. Struggling to get into the corner area is Paymont. He belts his man. Here's off. Now the Nordiques are bustling in New York territory. Here's off playing it on the left side. Gives that 
pass on the left wing to Keller. Keller sent it straight out in front. And the one off Weir's stick. In on the board. McCray is number 11. He's on for the first time against Sutter there in the corner. From the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, this is Stanley Cup 82 on CBC. You've got the time to spend. Go ahead, my friend. You can depend on your Johnson. Leave your worries behind. Time out of mind. You can rely on your Johnson. Try something new. You can make it through. Your friends are born for you and your Johnson. Take the time to do whatever you want to. It's all waiting for you and your Johnson. More boaters rely on Johnson than any other outboard in the world. Now well, we had a bit of a hassle just as we broke away in front of the Quebec bench on a line change that our Deeks seemed to have a couple of extra players out on the ice and so did the Islanders. Somebody, is that somebody cut there? I believe so. And it, was, it was hard to tell. They, they were on a, a line change, both teams, and suddenly the players all gathered around at close quarters and everybody we couldn't see. It was just like a big football huddle. I think it was McCray and Sutter. There's Sutter, and you're going to now, I think, Dick and Don, be able to analyze the disallowed goal. And watch for possibly it to go off. It's hard to stick over the shoulder or came on. Hard to tell right here. No, that, that didn't hit hard to stick. It hit Paymont. The Paymont was below. Missed hard to stick. Oh, well. So, so you think Quebec should be leading one to nothing? Absolutely. And so does Michel Bergeron. Look at him over there. What happened was McCray had a few things to say as he went by the bench there as they were going by. And uh, I tell you, and I'm not going to beat this to death, but this is going to be a real grind cup series. Basil McCray and Brent Sutter have received misconduct penalties for that little hassle over at the bench area. So now the face-off to the left to Bouchard. The Islanders, everybody up. McEwen on this side, Moore on the other. They are out of your fixtures. And now Tonelli is going in there to do the honor against Hunter of Quebec. They struggle for the face-off and coming up with it. There's a mix-up down there. Tonelli. And that would be Hunter, I think. Is it number 32? He fell. And I didn't get his number but i think it would be yes hunter it's hunter for holding on the what happened was he got a stick tied up on canelli and he couldn't get it loose tonight's stanley cup playoff game is coming to you from the nassau coliseum in uniondale new york <laughs> quebec sale hunter off for holding at 439 power play underway now there's a shot, the rebound right in front, another save! Two outstanding saves by Bouchard. Power here by the Islanders, and Bossy swings it back to the line. Puck on the shot, and a blistering glass wide. It's high into the air. Desperately trying to clear it up. The back. Now, here's Bourne getting set in. It goes back to Potman to Bourne. Bourne fakes the shot. Here's Captain Potman dropping it out. Poke swings it to the other side. The Islanders pounce on it. It goes to Potsdam again. They have a powerful lineup out there. Here's Pearson getting it over the board. In the box. The Nordic. Rushmore clearing it. Not out. Pearson coming in. Winding up the left shot. They take. They score. Touch it. First time one takes place. On Trotze over the side. Nice save by Bouchard in the top corner there. Very close up here on Bouchard now as he makes the pass save on the low drive by Persaud. But no chance on the rebound. Trotze in ahead of Rochefort. Off 
the edge of the creek. One nothing. You cannot ask the goaltender to do more than that on a blast from the point. Now there was a classic case of a guy giving the puck away. Quebec giving the puck away, killing a penalty. Never, never do that. He didn't do anything with it. He put it out to the point like a perfect pass. And Don, that New York power play looked awesome. It looked more like the power play of last year's playoffs. I understand they were struggling, stuttering, and starting with not too much power in the playoffs against Pittsburgh and against the New York Rangers. But that was something, wasn't it, right there, that power play? Well, it looks like Potvin is ready to go now. He's got life. He's hitting. He's ready. He's got that jump, that fire back that has been missing uh, so far in the playoffs. The goal on the power play, Trotje, is his playoff point-scoring heroics continue. His fifth of this playoff year. Person and Denny Potvin assisting at 529. So well, now we have Hunter and Goring moved out of that center circle for the face-off. Now it is Hunter having words over there with Dwayne Sutter. He is the bearded one. And he just missed the stick from Hunter by a close shave. Very, very close. Is that done? <laughs> He's as sharp as Potvin. It's going to be a hair-raising series, I believe. Yes, there's a shot grabbed by Boucher. Could, oh, not, could not get it out of his glove stuck in there. But this Hunter, let me say something about Hunter. He is the backbone of this. He'll take on Gilly. He'll take on anybody. He's not a big fella, but I'll tell you, he's the backbone. They cannot afford to lose him. He's not afraid of anybody. They're trying to settle him down now. They, you'd hate to see him go off the ice. That's the kind of player you need. Watch him on this face-off. Watch this shot now. Gilles Lipskin now watch it. Gets right in his glove. Well, that's a pretty shot, hard shot, Dick. <laughs> 14 minutes and 19 seconds. The time remaining in the opening period. One to nothing. A power play goal for the Islanders by Trottier. And the officials are going to earn their money for the entire series right here tonight. Well, that's Hunter. He gets down on those face-offs. He's offside every time. It's grabbed off. He's hit behind the net. Coming into the center ice area. Lead pass goes off. Cloutier, the Islanders, clearing it back. That is Weir back there for checking Goring, and he's a master at that. Now it's Goring coming to the left side. You just joined us. What looked like a Nordic goal by Pema was disallowed. And then the Islanders came back and they have scored legitimately in the eyes of the officials the first goal of this series. There is Gillies clearing it to the line. Goring coming down. Hutch over, makes the move, and he couldn't get by Pichat. Goulet was rushed up by Gillies. Goring falls. Morrow back at the line. Hands it off to McEwen. McEwen clearing it to the line. Over Mary around the net. He took the pass from Sutter and then tried to get it back to Sutter. Sutter is poking away. Jammed into the board by P. Shuck. And Bouchard broke his stick on the play to begin with. He gets a bit of a break that it was finally whistled out. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. Fresh air. For 50 years, we've been improving the way we move it underground. Half a mile away. It could soon form part of an even better controlled atmosphere system for Canada's mines. It's another advance in mine safety technology. And it's one we thought you should know. This is the situation here in the first game of the Wales Conference Final Series. The Campbell Conference Final should be getting underway in about five minutes' time at the Chicago Stadium. And we will be switching by our NHL update to the stadium in Chicago to bring you highlights from that game. The announcers on duty in Chicago are Don Whitman and Gary Dornhofer. Do we have a prediction, Mr. Terry, on that one? You were saying before we went on the air that that's going to be a rough series. Oh, that's going to be the physical of the uh, whole playoff. And Steve Gord and Fraser and Williams and a few of those steps get going. It is going to be a tough. That is going to be the physical one of all. Right, they come back in Chicago. The big crowd jam, just like the good old days. I'll tell you, it's, uh, these upsets have really helped hockey. I think uh, St. Louis, they say they had 23,000 there. So play is on again, and we have a lot of fight.
feisty fellows out there. Tonight there's Cardiff chasing it to the line, over the line, now goes to the right side. Rammed in on the boards by Pearsall. Anton Stasny jammed over the play by Elijah Vestasny trying to get it outside. Right there, Park on the open side was Cardiff. Now Tonelli coming in over the line with Nystrom, good play. It's picked up near it, goodbye. Huck is down the ice. This is going to be icing in all probability against Quebec, but they were very fortunate there, Doug. Curtis even going at it now. I'll tell you, everybody, uh, there's nobody not uh, have bad feelings out there right now. That was a broken play. Now watch the post. This was a broken play. Watch he hits it. Nice little backhand. Could have been 2 nothing. You don't know how a uh, uh, disallowed goal. And here's another angle of it. Dick, take it. Good play by Merrick. Good to score on much this year. He let it go in a crowd, really. Good backhand. But then he gets penalized on that play Don you mentioned back at the other end when Cardiff got involved. So Cardiff and Merrick have now been penalized slashing at the 720 mark here in this first period. But you don't know how a disallowed goal when you know it should count it just takes something out of you. You say, okay, let's forget it, gang. But somehow it's always there. You're thinking about it. Now, when they go in at the end of the first period, I can hear Paymont uh, going in. The, Michelle will go up to him and say, now be quiet. Now be quiet. Let's forget it. But it's always there. But you know the best way to forget about it even before the end of this period is to get two. <laughs> Easily said than done, Don. Now toward that end. We have the Nordiques, everybody up. Paymon tries to get it back against Trottier. Now on the line, rush for a shot! And a glorious save there on that gloved rapier like thrust with a left hand by Billy Smith. He's back in business. Well, that should never have happened because they got the draw and the guy coughed it up in the corner. Pearson coughed it up. Now he got it there and he put it out to the point. Got to be careful when it's four on four. What a great save. He was screened on that too. We have Peter Sasse and Anton, his brother, up front. Harry on back at a point along with Rochefort into the center ice area. The Islanders chase it. That is Carroll. Harry Ann played it back. Rochefort rolled it into the center ice area. Lane lining up his man, Anton Sasse, and he missed him by a sizable margin. Lane lugging it into the center ice area, trying to hit Trottier. There's Rossmore back there. Hotman, the captain of the Islanders, moving up. The Nordics in on that left side. In over the line, Peter Sasney. Sharp angle shot blocked easily by Smith. Circling from the corner, Trottier over on the far side. It goes to Lane. He takes a look. He cleared it ahead, and it's intercepted. Here's Peter Sasney. He has excellent moves. Puts on the brakes. Wait, shovels the pass over there. Dupont missed it. Three Islanders into the center ice area. Now one of them dropped back. Over on the far side, Trottier. Goulang cleared it out over the line. Seven minutes and 32 seconds of time remaining in the opening period. One to nothing to score. With the Islanders leading on a power play goal. Pichette has it knocked off the stick by Bourne. Here's McEwen losing it. Hunter center to right in front. Goulet couldn't get turned around. There's a screen shot. To hit somebody right in front of Smith, Dupont took the shot. Now the Islanders back into the center ice area. Posse at the line. Horn goes the other way. Now it's picked up. Out over the line. Hunter, he lost it. Gets it again. Coming in over the line. Goulet is going to get in front. Pichette moving in there too. Pichette shoots it. And he wraps it off the leg of McEwen. Into the corner, Morrow. On the other side, McEwen, a long lead pass. Bossy couldn't get that. Now we're down to 10 minutes. Four seconds left. There's a pass. There's a shot right on. Bossy roaring in when he saw that Bourne took the puck in the Quebec zone. Back in over the line, a drop pass. Pinky dropped it back. Picked up by the Islanders. Derrick is in over the line. Gets it to Bossy. He's getting set. And a blistering blast right on. And that's a toughest shot that Bossy has let go tonight. They were booming black. But luckily, one missed and the other one was right on. The Bouchard to 
you see it all the way. That's Wayne Sutter in the corner. It's played around, trying to pick it up on the left side. Keller gives it to Persaw. Persaw having his difficulty. Here it is, center to backhand shot. And Hickey was jamming that shot against the leg of Lizabeth. Now the Islanders starting out. They don't get very far. Part of went after Persaw. Keller working down the line with the head fake into DeCorey. Into the slot. He looks. Drops it back to Lizabeth. With the score, the New York Islanders won the Quebec Nordiques nothing. This is Stanley Cup 82 on CBC. Escort and Lynx Mart sales have more than doubled over February. Back it goes to the line. DuPont, a very anemic shot. He was unable to tee it up. Now DuPont went after Nystrom and missed it. Here's Mary clearing it in there. One to nothing. The Islanders leading Nystrom. He swung Moeller around. Jose chasing it to the far side. Coming out over the line. Peter Stasse. He's a bit of a magician with that puck. Got it to Moeller. The Islanders are not giving the Nordic much skating room, though. They've got a guy coming back all the time. And Nystrom coming in and it's west of the line. Not out. Pop band. Randy Muller of the Nordiques has just become a statistic in the NHL for the first time, Don. He picked a pretty good guy to draw his first penalty with. Denny Potvin holding the call. So here we go again. The Islanders with the power play goal earlier on get another power play chance. In the playoffs so far, a penalty taken while playing the Nordic bodes badly for the team concerned. But following that script tonight, the Islanders, they already have a power play goal, and they're coming to the attack again. For number 14, barges his way in there. On the board, Pichet trying to get a whistle, and he does. Bergeron was asked about the contrasting power plays. We saw in that Boston series, Don, the Nordiques with tremendous patience on the power play. They hung on the puck over a minute before even taking a shot. He said that the Islanders shoot more. They shoot, they shoot, they shoot again. Yes, they do. And you can see Ali give Putman a little rest there, about a 10-second rest. He had a, about a minute and a half shift out there, so he let, took him off for about 10 seconds and put him back on. Down the face of the shot. Trottier. He worked in from the face-off, let a pretty good shot go now. Bossy getting it to Pearson. To Bourne, he takes the look. Where is it going to go? He's going to work to the corner. In it goes. Trottier. They have that alignment. Good defensive play there by the Nordic Goulet. What an outstanding player. 16 has been for the Nordic throughout the entire playoff series. Now Potvin over on the other side. Pearson has it. Gillies is off the bench. Potvin takes a shot, knocked down in front. He said very clearly, hands it off to Hunter. One minute exactly remaining in the penalty to Muller. The Islanders are leading in this one, one to nothing on the power play goal. They're broken up, in over the line. Here's Hickey. He couldn't get anywhere, and Potvin knocked it to the line into the center ice area. Here's Bossy nimbly picking his way in over the line and dropping it back. Gillies gets it to the line and Pierce on back into Gillies. Gillies right in front of Potvin. And he puts control it. And very alertly, the Nordic pick it up. Led by Cote, and they shoot it down the end. And now the penalty time remaining for Moeller is down to 18 seconds. Nordics are going to play off at least a half dozen of those seconds with that possession. Here is going, gathering speed on the right side, and Goulet was there to stop it. Moro at the line, two seconds. The penalty has expired. Moro putting on the brakes. Goulet getting set, and he fired it. Bouchard got his glove on it. Now it comes off 
for six of the corner. We're fighting for possession in vigorous fashion in the corner. Out of the penalty box is Muller. The rookie has it, played it behind the net, and here's Weir. Back to Muller. And he missed on the attempt to negotiate a pass to Golan. So we're down now to six minutes and six seconds in the first period. The Islanders are leading one to nothing on a goal by Trottier. P.J. playing it in the corner. Into the center ice area. Rushmore with that long shot in toward Smith. And now the Nordics are going in there. Everybody across the line trying to tie up the Islanders. Trying to get possession. Anton Stasny couldn't get it against Morrow. There's Tonelli on the other side. He has to contend with Putier. And the Islanders get it to center. P.J. Dumped it in, and it's not often when you see the Stastny's out there that the puck is dumped in. Now it's off a stick in front, circling and failing to come up with it was Hunter. Nystra giving it to Mary. Nystra picking it up again, got around the rookie Muller, centered it, and it's gobbled up in front by DuPont. Ahead to Hunter, drop pass back to Hunter, over on this side, and that area was vacated. Spinelli faking the shot. Nystrom is trying to get in front into the corner. There he is. Dupont. Hearing it off the board. Here's Pottier severing it. And the Nordic free of a press into the center ice area. Dusty over the line. Offside. Live from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, the Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC. We've been telling you that you can get a lot more Canadian Tire than tires. There's a lot more to Canadian Tire than tires. Four minutes and 40 seconds, the time left in the opening period. It's beginning to settle down a bit in the last five or six minutes. We have not had the type of reckless, solid body belting. They're checking very closely now. Well, uh, they are still talking to Bruce Hood about that call. Every time he comes out, he has a little something to say about it. Well, as we mentioned, at this moment at the Chicago Stadium, the Blackhawks and the Vancouver Canucks are underway in their Canberra Conference Final, and as that game moves along, we will be showing you highlights from the Chicago Stadium. And the scoring plays, Don Whitman doing the play-by-play -play in that game, so that's going to be part of our broadcast tonight as we keep you posted on what's happening at the stadium in Chicago. Al Arbor's getting everybody in, Dan. Everybody. Everybody's playing. He's going with four lights. Everybody's getting the shift to get warmed up. And the Stastny's are out there. They deal delightfully delicate passes. Feathery all the way. And there's Paymont. Why is it down that the Europeans pass the puck so well? Well, they handle that puck, Dave. Every time I ask the guy that, they never go on the ice without and skate. They have the puck the whole time. It's so beautiful to watch. And so effective down the right side. Posse over the line, fakes the shot. Try to get it in front, and DuPont rolls it to the line, not out. Ford in for Brassier. He's tied up in an effective manner by Terry Off. Now, the Posse with that head fake. Puck comes to the line, it's kept in. Well, that was a good defensive play. Don will talk about that no doubt later. The defenseman stayed right with Posse. I've forgotten who was it. You remember back there? Whereas Paymon, he made the move on to start with. Clearing it off. Marion Stastny back it goes. Pichet, the long shot. A weak shot. Here is Potvin. He has been a, an outstanding figure so far there. Sutter going in the shot. Bouchard came down a bit, was in line of fire, and saved perhaps the second goal against Quebec. It was a long pass from Potvin. Now into the Islanders' zone. Here's McEwen. They race away the Islanders do into the center ice area. Cowell over the line to Cowell. Going in. Another brilliant save with that left leg by Bouchard. Racing back quickly, Peter Stastny. Anton is trying to get in front. The pass hit him. Here's Stastny, and he lost it. And the Islanders back into the center ice area. Over the line. Stop at the line.
guard by Therrien. He's up there without a helmet. Handing it off. Anton Stassi, a good move around the net, trying to center it. And it goes off the stick back around. Therrien hit the side of the net. Pressure here by Koke and the Nordiques. Koke again in the corner. Handing it off to Hickey. He rode it in front. Back to the line. Pichetta shot high, high. Billy Smith. He looked a couple of ways there. He saw he didn't have to use his stick, and he just skated with the puck behind the net. Now on the board, St. John's for it. And the Islanders, McEwen rolling it down into Quebec territory. That was some of the best pressure of the period by Quebec. But they weren't getting those good, solid shots on Smith. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. We love this old house at first sight. Al Arbor, coach of the Islanders, who are hoping to become the first United States-based team ever to win the Stanley Cup three years in a row. He told me before the game not to make fun of his suits. <laughs> Especially you. Did he ever make fun of yours? Never. You know, I saw you down there with Dave Hodge. We like the hockey night in Canada. On some. There's the jumper, Coutier! And he ripped it off the goal post. Oh, he rattled up, and I'd like to see it. I think it went off solidly, didn't it? Yes. Now Coutier playing it back at the line to Captain DuPont. High pass. Anyway, getting back to these uh, contrasting attire, Dave Hodge looks fine in our ensemble. Pale blue, but it pale in front of your resplendent <laughs> semifinal playoff new suit acquisition. What do you do with the old one? You have great taste, Daddy. <laughs> I'm looking for your old suit. Give him the Dick Bettles. And Hunter, I can't say enough about Hunter. He seems as he goes out of his way to go after Nystrom and Gillies. I'm telling you, this, he is something. Now it is Lane giving it to Potvin down to a minute and a half in the opening period. It's been a long period from the point of view of consumption of, well, now it's daylight time. Potvin broke it up. Let's see, we're almost five minutes to nine. Now Kuti up on the left side, scooting in there, Goulet. Staying with him was Lane, and when you stay with Goulet, you have done something. And he forced Goulet to get away, a shot that did not have too much on it. Now Lane, Last number 24, poking away at a Cloutier, along the board. Trying to grab it, there is Gilly. Out over the line, it goes. Dwayne Sutter in over the line, to go and Dr. Sutter. He rolled it wide, he centered it again. And a bouncing puck is finally cleared over the Quebec line. 40 seconds remaining. Goring playing it across the line. Here is Pichet trying to shake off Pinelli on the right side. Stastny Marion had his pass go off the leg to center, put back there by Ron Ford, picked up by Mary. He couldn't get anywhere. Potvin, who has been a prominent figure in the opening period of this conference final. There's Marion Stastny passing it. Potvin was there, he rolled it on in, down into Quebec territory. Bouchard played it, here's Canelli. It goes to Merrick, trying to get it, and he does! And that almost backfired, clearing that puck to the board. Well, the team played the ice. The Islanders ahead by one, and the Nordiques still talking to referee Hood as they leave the ice, I'm sure, about the no-goal call. 13 to 8, the shots on goal in favor of the Islanders. Now here we are again with Dave Hodge. Just one goal, that's by Brian Trotche on the power play. Uh, several goals that might have been. Uh, the closest of those actually went into the net. The Wolf Paymont disallowed goal, plus each team hit a goal post. So the score at the end of one period of play is the New York Islanders 1 and the Quebec Nordiques nothing. Ford and its dealers announced cash rebates on new light trucks. $200 on Courier, $300 on Ranger, $750 on conventional pickups, Econoline vans, and on 4x4s. 
These are cash rebates. You get a check direct from Ford. Up to $1,000 on Club Wagon. And up to $2,000 on Bronco. Cash rebates on Ford light trucks. And now's the time to get them. Details at participating Ford and Mercury dealers. <clears throat> Congratulations, people! By offering our customers toll-free services, they're placing more orders more easily. Right, Arm Brewster? <laughs> and we're solving billing problems over the phone, Ludlow. One toll-free call to us, and our customers have never been so happy. Keep that stock rolling, Dorlinger. <laughs> now that profits are up and expenses down, we can have our cake and eat it, too. Business long distance. Today's way to operate. Islanders have the only goal after the first period of this best of seven Prince of Wales conference final. Brian Troche scored it. And with me now is the third leading scorer in the NHL during the regular season, Peter Sassny of the Nordiques, who can shed some light on the disallowed goal by Wilf Pema. Peter says it was not because of a high stick. Yeah, as long as I've seen and what the player told me, you know, it was deflected by the hand. And, you know, the, I think the rule says, you know, if the goal is not scored by the on purpose, by, by your leg or by your hand, it should be goal, you know, and unfortunately it wasn't because there is a referee to judge such a situation and a couple of minutes later, you know, they, they had a power play and they scored the goal. So the ruling is that Wolf Payma directed the puck into the net with his glove. Now, the Islanders have plenty of experience. They've won two straight Stanley Cups and very few of the Nordiques have ever been this far in Stanley Cup play. You haven't, but you have won a world championship and you've been in Olympic tournaments. Can you compare the pressure that you feel now to what you felt in world tournament play? Uh, sure, there is a lot of pressure, but I don't know. Maybe I was always such a man that I didn't feel too much pressure. Even even when I was in the first world championship when I was 19, so, you know, for me, it meant a lot. And even journalists, everybody was surprised. You know, why you're not so shaky? Why do you don't feel so much pressure? I, I don't know. I just played the hockey, and I really like it, you know. But you sure you can compare this because it's a, for a hockey player in Europe, to win the World Championship, it's a top. Here in Canada, to win the Stanley Cup, it's something, you know, everybody wants to reach there, and, you know, we're trying, we are on our way, but, you know, as you said, there is a really, really well-experienced team, but we tr we're we going to try our best. Would the thrill be as big for you to win the Stanley Cup as it was to win the world title? Sure, it's going to be, because, you know, I came, I came here, and for me, there was everything open. You know, I had a new goal, and believe me, on the top of everything, there is a Stanley Cup. Everyone wants to be written in that big cup. Well, if the Nordiques win, there'll be three Stastny names that, uh, that go up there. It was quite dramatic the other night with Steve Casper checking you all night long at the Boston Garden. I wonder if that bothered you, and I wonder if you uh, prefer what happened here in the first period. It does not seem as though the Islanders are going to put one player to check Peter Stastny. No, so far it uh, uh, you know, doesn't seem so. But in the Boston, it was pretty rough. It was pretty tough for me because, you know, always easier to check when there is more and more game, you know, when the players are, you know, more tired and, you know, and even we, we were trying the kind of strategy I was playing in two lines and to shake him, shake him down and, but he was there always, you know, but it really didn't bother me and you could see we had some chances and finally, you know, we scored the power plays, but we won and it was main, main thing. I don't know how the Islanders are going to watch you in this series, but we will enjoy watching you uh, for four games or perhaps as many as seven, uh, and that's always a pleasure. Good luck. Thank you very much. Peter Stastny of the Nordiques, who are trailing one to nothing at the end of one period of play. Coming up next, a film feature that will show how the officials prepare for playoffs and what exactly they mean to the referees and the linesmen. The Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC will continue in just a moment. Andrews isn't just any first hole. It's the first first hole. So you don't just choose any long ball. You choose Top Flight or Top Flight XL. The longest balls. From tee to green, no leading ball can beat Top Flight. Maybe that's why over three million golfers play the longest ball. What are you playing? Top Flight? Wish I had. Top Flight, <laughs> the longest balls. Energizer. This fence could take all day. All day? Good thing I just put the Energizer in your radio. Of all leading brands, nothing outlasts the Energizer from EverReady. For years, people with big lawns have faced the same problem. 
What to do with the clippings? Now there's the John Deere six and a half bushel twin banger. Two big hoppers you line with plastic trash bags. So cleanup's neat and easy. It could be the best way ever to take care of your clippings. We think everyone should have one. The twin banger, available for John Deere lawn tractors and riding mowers. Some oil companies make a lot of claims about their oils. But Quaker State offers an extended lubrication warranty on new car engines protected exclusively by Quaker State Motor Oil, the way they have since 1932. Now that's putting your confidence where your oil is. And what's more, with these new energy saver motor oils, you can save enough on gas to pay for the oil you use in oil changes. So Quaker State helps cars last and save gas too. No extravagant claims, just quality motor oil. Brian Trotje has put the New York Islanders up by a goal at the end of one period here at the Nassau Coliseum. Every NHL player looks forward to the Stanley Cup playoffs as the most exciting time of the season, and it should come as no surprise that the officials have elation and disappointment and many other feelings at this time of the year as well. Administration of NHL officials is done in this building, located in Toronto, handy to the airport because Scotty Morrison and his staff log hundreds of thousands of miles over a season. We start the season with a schedule of 840 games and we try to build a very competent and professional team of officials. We have 12 referees that would work in the National Hockey League and 21 linesmen. And we select our top 10 referees and our top 18 linesmen to start the playoffs. So that makes it extremely competitive for these fellows because this is the incentive that uh, they work very hard for or towards all season. When we get into the semifinals, then we drop down to our eight referees and the whole idea of this is to um, get a team that's well organized, but a team that uh, each game means something to them. As we get into the playoffs, I think, for example, of the NFL or the uh, World Series, where they're dealing with officials uh, who may have 25 years experience. They may be 50, 55 years of age, but I consider professional hockey the most difficult uh, of the sports to officiate, and we're dealing with a lot younger staff, and that's one of the reasons that we start with young officials, 22, 23, and normally by the age of, say, 45, 46, our senior people are thinking of retiring. So this makes it a very uh, competitive field for young people coming in, but certainly offers an outstanding career, in my opinion. Frank Adveri, one of only a handful of referees honored with induction into the Hockey Hall of Fame, is the senior supervisor of officials. From a supervisor standpoint, that you look to see, first of all, see how he's handling certain, like, say, emotional situations, how is his positioning, um, the linesmen, uh, their line calls, their communication, uh, their teamwork, uh, their face-offs. And when this is all after the game, I usually just make notes, and then after the game, I go back to the hotel and I uh, make out my radio report, which goes into the uh, to Scotty uh, Morrison's office in Toronto. With teams videotaping all their games, the league offices often refer to these tapes for further supervision and evaluation. John McCauley, whose refereeing career was cut short by an eye injury, acts as the assistant director of officiating. Much like a head coach, he has the job of telling the officials which ones will go on and which ones will be eliminated from further service in the playoffs. And being on the other side, I'm very aware of a person's feeling. And we try to bring them in on a one-to-one -on -one consultation and to explain to them why they aren't working. And I think if a, an individual official is fair to himself, he'll understand why he is not working. And, uh, we point things out as to, you know, to help him along because we don't want to destroy the fellow as well. We still want him and most want a future in the business. It's just that everybody can't be selected and there has to be decisions made and we hope we can render these decisions without hurting too many feelings. trained NHL officials are true professionals, paid to do a very physically and emotionally demanding job. The salaries are very good. Our young referees start somewhere in the area around $30,000 and they work up to $60,000, $65,000. 
Our linesmen are just a little lower. They start in the area of around $23,000, $24,000 and can go up to $50,000. And for the playoffs, of course, which is the big incentive, we start somewhere our top people can earn close to $15,000 for playoffs if they work right through the Stanley Cup Finals. The one I have up can yeah. and the one and this one, they both can't go for it right here. And he, uh, it is generally you calling it. Steve, Steve, I have But it's more than money that motivates the men who wear the striped shirts and blow the whistles as far as Frank and Barry is concerned. To really uh, put up with all the abuse and the criticism, uh, the travel, everything connected with officiating, you have to be extremely dedicated. You may not always agree with their calls, but just about everybody agrees that it is the toughest sport in the business to officiate. One example of a close call in that first period, referee Bruce Hood ruling the Wolf Fama put the puck into the net with his hand. And so the Nordiques goal was disallowed. We go to Chicago Stadium now, and we'll get an update from first period action. Vancouver at Chicago, the play-by-play -play call of Don Whitman. On the left side, for Secord into the center ice area. Savar across the line. Good move, right in. Save, rebound. They jam away, and Brodeur, as he did against Los Angeles, made the big save as Savard made a great move at the line to go right in on the Vancouver goaltender. Now it's Secord in the corner against Redeen, trying to work that puck loose. It comes back to the point and is brought out by Lars Moline. Drop pass for Redeen. Redeen in the slot. Fraser fired it wide. In back of the net. Dumped up along the boards for Secord, trying to get it out. And finally it's fired out to center eye. Wilson plays it in, takes a body check. It's deflected back to center ice, and the Hawks have to regroup. Sharply runs into a check at the line. The puck loose. Redeen having difficulty. Gets it again. Slaps a score! Hell, isn't it amazing how our team will get a rush? The goalie comes up with a big save, and just a few moments later, that hockey club will take advantage of a miscue at the center right area. Redeen, you notice everybody was fishing for the puck. Hutchinson probably should have just rent right at Redeen and taken him out. Let him go, and Gradine fired that slap shot past Tonio. You notice how far Esposito came out to try to cut down that angle. Was not successful, so the Canucks get the first win and go ahead one to nothing. Big goal for Vancouver. One to nothing for the visitors at the Chicago Stadium, and here the home side is up by a goal. Brian Trotche putting the Islanders ahead of Quebec. One to nothing will return with the Stanley Cup playoff in just a moment. We're celebrating our 20th anniversary with a store full of bargains. Rich enough to restrain this rushing roller coaster? No. Is Foamy thick and rich enough to support this lovely lady? No. Is foamy thick and rich enough to hold up this husky hiker? <laughs> no. But if you want a clean, close shave, it's more than thick and rich enough. Okay, move him out! If you've got goods to deliver and your trucks don't seem to care, if your peak season comes, and your trucks are past their peak. Then it's Ryder to the rescue. Ryder rents trucks. From small vans up to giant tractors to move your products or your family. Ain't they beautiful? When your trucks are giving up, Ryder trucks are just starting up. Same place we were at last time. Hold on, you guys. Give me a hand. Oh, it's Ralph and Ron. Get in here. You know he's just going to worry away the whole weekend. Somebody's got to do it. Spend the whole weekend soaking. For years now, Ron and the guys have taken the weekend to enjoy a little camping and a little eggs. Like to talk to the owner of this establishment? The good things never change. Molson Export keeps on tasting great. Oh, I hope it's sunny tomorrow. What? Give up all this? <laughs> Before we commence the second period here at the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island, we have another brief look at action from the first period at the Chicago Stadium again, Don Whitman. 20,960 witnessed the game against Minnesota. 
Preston along the boards, trying to get away from Bredin. Back of the goal, out front, loose puck, they score! Kruskowski! Now, right from the face-off, Terry Ruskowski had position in front of that net. Whoops! And then Preston does the corner work. Now look at Ruskowski. He was in front. He got away from Belland and eventually put the puck in on his backhand. So the teams are back on the ice, and in a matter of minutes, I would think we'll have the second period underway. Dick, have you something new to report from Chicago? No, nope, not since we just saw the goal by Ruskowski. Gradine had scored earlier for Vancouver. 1-1, one, 1-0 one, one here. Brian Trotche, the only goal-getter in the first period here at the Nassau Coliseum. A power play goal. Hunter was in the penalty box. Trotche scored at 5.29 from Perston and Denny Potvan. You see the shots on goal, 13-8 in favor of the Islanders. Trotche had three shots on goal, along with Rochefort of Quebec. He also had three. They were the leaders. Frank Classy had a pair. Two good ones, as Danny pointed out. A few comments on the first period, Tom. I think the Islanders look alive and bouncing. And it is Moeller bouncing it over to the left side to DuPont. He got rid of it. Striding back there is Potvin. Nordic moving up there to forecheck. They have Cote on with Marion Stasny and Peter Stasny. The Islanders lead up on the right side to Bossy with that pass to Bourne. He tried to bring it in, and he took a gentle jolt from Moe. Now from the corner. Out it comes to the line. The Islanders are on it. Bourne firing it across on the left side. Bossy was upended behind the net. They struggled for it. And DuPont again rolls it down the ice into New York territory. On the right side, Bossy, he couldn't get anywhere, and the early pattern in the second period is one on which we see they accentuate the close checking. Now the teams are making changes while the play goes on, and Bossy looks over on that far left wing. It's knocked down at the line by Tonelli, and it is called at the Quebec blue line. What Trotche is doing on the power play, instead of staying way back in the end and coming out because they're forcing, Quebec is forcing, he's staying way up here on the blue line, pulling a defenseman back so they can walk out easier. That is why that left winger is open all the time, Dan. Face off in the center ice area. Number 11 is Merrick. Nystrom on the right side. Tonelli on the other wing for New York. And we have Hunter. Goulet, Tonelli, shoot! A blistering shot, and Bouchard stopping that one has sustained an injury. Let us hope it is not serious, because here again tonight, he has been brilliant. From the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, this is Stanley Cup 82 on CBC. When you buy a new car, you want to keep it looking new. Well, Dan Bouchard shaken up briefly by the shot fired his way from the left side. John Tonelli let it go after the pass from Merrick. Right here, Bouchard was hurt right away, you could tell. But he's up on his feet, shook his head, I'm okay, when the trainer was there briefly with him, and he is back in action and standing up in the goal crease area down in the Nordic zone to our right. one nothing. the Nordics trailing here early second period. The Islanders with the defense over the line. The face-off, however, picked up by the Nordiques. One to nothing. New York leading. There's a good pass into the center ice area and a splendid move by Hunter. But when he moved to the left, he lost it. Now the Islanders with Nystrom using the skates in fine fashion. Gets it over to Manelli around the net. This big fellow can skate, John. There goes the Nystrom. He tried to set up. Tonelli again, Merrick in the corner. Tonelli there again doing outstanding work. Goulet was checked and the puck goes down into 
The New York Stone taken there by Nystrom over on the other side. Langevin clearing it to Gillies back to Langevin. Nystrom in for Gillies. Big left winger trying to pass it out. And he hit Keyshack. Goulet chasing it, couldn't pick it up. It's in the center right there, he back to the line. Now long pass off the board. We're standing firm at the line, broke it up. Here's Goulet clearing it in. But you see there, you had four Islanders strewn across their blue line. And penetration became very, very difficult for Quebec. McEwen, a long shot. Bouchard clearing it in there. Pass goes to the left side. Pass for the Goulet ahead. Calling was Tamon. And Tamon, no doubt, very disappointed over that goal, which he thought was very legitimate, which was disallowed. Here's going with the head fake. He couldn't fool Terry at. It's centered. Pass for getting it to the line. McEwen giving it back in there. Lee Tuck is over there. He's going. It is not going to be allowed. No goal. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. Varathane. It's the clear wood finish made only by the Flecto Company for over 20 years. Flecto. When you want to do it right. Dwayne Sutter of the Islanders was penalized for interference on that last play. That was the reason Bruce had blew the whistle. No real complaint from the Islanders on the call. So we'll take a look at it here. The puck went in the net, but the whistle definitely had gone, Don. What's he call it? Interference on Bouchard? Yeah, he was knocking Bouchard around in there in the crease. Anybody standing in there now will get a penalty if they knock the goaltender down. Never used to be that way. Darn offer would have had a thousand penalties. <laughs> so an opportunity now for Quebec to even the score in this hockey game. They're behind one to nothing. But they have the advantage manpower-wise. They're trying to get their power play organized. It's being ignited here by a fellow who plays tremendously well at all times. Stasny. Anton Stasny now got it. Here's Fouchier taking a look. The Islanders in that box. In on the board to Anton Stasny. His pass is stopped there by Morrow. Stasny again taking a look. Back it goes. Fouchier to the other side. Pichet into Marion Stasny. It's behind the net. Anton sweeps it into the corner to Peter. Back along the board. Now Pichet going in, takes the shot. And it was blocked by Smith. Here down the ice by Potvin. Tell us about this power play of Quebec, Tom. Well, watch. They'll wait till they get a good shot. They will not take a shot that's not on. Now, three north eight. Dean down. In all the line. Backhand shot. Peter Stasny, he did not have much on it. He tries to center it as Bob Smith and roll down the ice again by Potvin. 42 seconds remaining in the penalty to Sutter and the Nordiques again try. They're in over the line. They get it back to the line. Here is Cardiff. Cardiff takes the look. He'll pick out his man. There he does. Smith got his stick out. Tamar has it. Amon getting set, he centered it. But a plethora of Ireland players are there, and they took over. Now behind the net, it goes. Cardiff is rushed up on the board by Morrow. Digging to pick it up. He's scoring, and it's wrapped off Goring's leg on that shot by Cloutier. Cloutier is pushed by Goring. Behind the net, it goes. The penalty has expired. Now here's Tamar waiting, he centered it. To the other side, there's the shot, off the leg. The shot was taken by Pichette, and it's shot down the ice by the Islanders. Bouchard, in daring fashion, went to the corner. He lost the stick, he's back in the net. Bouchard was belted by Sutter, and Sutter is going off again. And we've got an injured Nordique on the play. I think it's Mark Cardiff. There you see him coming here. No, that's Norma Rochefort. Hang on, Dick. Don't get in a hurry. It's Cardiff. He was shaken up. And Bouchard's going to draw a penalty. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York.
point. Well, it's usually Billy Smith who gets the penalty done when the Islanders are in the game, but Bouchard right here, that's what upset him. Well, yes, yeah, so when he comes back, Sutter come right across the crease again. Now watch this collision when he comes back here. Nails him pretty good. I didn't know Daniel did that. Part of serving the penalty, interference at 535. So the Islanders get the advantage. It is not Sutter. Bouchard is off with that exchange between the goalie and the forward of the Islanders. Pearson getting it off to the right side. Back to Pearson. There's the shot. Bossy trying to get it. Pearson over the other side. McEwen takes the shot. And the pass back was not a good decision. He went out over the line. Nordics are behind in this game one to nothing. They are down manpower wise in the penalty box. Serving a penalty is Cardiff. And he is serving the time of best against Bouchard. Here come the Islanders. Trottier leading a four-man attack in over the line. Couldn't get by Rock for on the left side. And the Quebec defenseman stayed right with it and shot it down the ice. A minute and five seconds of time remaining now in the penalty. The Islanders are experiencing all kinds of difficulty getting this power play into a factual operation and give big marks to the Nordiques. Well, this is why Bossy now is staying out around the red line now instead of Croce. What they're trying to do is pull our Smith off. Usually they're not getting in front the way they used to, uh, Dick. You know how yep. uh, Nystrom used to get in front, Gillis used to get in front, Canelli? Now they seem to be opening up a little more. John, going back a few minutes, 14 years with Danny Gallo in a broadcast booth. Never before did I hear him use the word plethora. What was that word? That's what plethora. I think it means there's a lot of them. Explain <laughs> that to me, Abbott. Uh, well, Dick just told me what it meant. Now into the center ice area. Bossy on the right side had a stop to pick up the rolling puck. And again, the Islanders are thwarted. Excellent penalty killing right here by the Nordic. Over on the other side, Potvin and Bossy. They're in front. They settled in front. And Trottier won and miss in baseball practice. Here's Goulet. Goulet into the corner. Sharp angle shot. Smith has it at the side of the net. And there are now 23 seconds remaining in the penalty against the back. Weaving up on the left side. Trottier takes the shot. Takes another one. Will he get it over on this side? No, it goes to the side of the net. Off Bossy to Trotsky again to Bossy. Bossy is working his way out. Over on this side to Trotsky. There's the shot. And he just grazed the goal post. Into the corner. Pressure here by the Islanders. They roll it in there. And it was agonizingly wide. Cardiff out of the penalty box. Over the line with Hunter and Akule. Back to Cardiff for a game. Prison. On that scoring opportunity by Quebec. There's an offside. With the score, the Islanders won. Quebec nothing. This is Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Me and Eloise couldn't get along without the CGE air cleaner. See, Eloise doesn't like cigar smoke and hates the smell of boiled cabbage. So, smoke and smells in here. Fresh, clean air out here works good. As a matter of fact, the CGE air cleaner and deodorizer is the only thing that keeps Eloise and me together. Ain't it, my little flower? Third period is over at the Chicago Stadium. 1-1, one, one, the Canucks and the Blackhawks. Wyskowski for Chicago. Thomas Gradine scoring for Vancouver. And now, exactly... 12 minutes left in the second period. And the first period, power play goal. By Trottier, the scoring story so far. Coming in two on one. Peter Scott, the over on the other side to Murray. And an excellent defensive play by number 26, Langevin. Here are the Nordic centering it again. And a shot by Marius Stasny just missed. Excellent offensive effort by the Nordic. Now they are going for the attack again. We're poking it loose. Peter Stasny around the back. He takes a look 
turning is of the gilt edge variety. There haven't been that many shots, but what there have been, there have been many brilliant efforts by the goalie from outside at the New York line. What a tremendous stop by Bouchard. The Nordiques had come very close at one end. And here's the save by Bouchard at the other. Great stop. Well, Don, that was the best offensive work by the Nordiques tonight. They had well, to awfully close. When they get the three of them together, they can move, I'll tell you. But you notice there's always a breakaway because they'll hang tough in there. They won't come back when they're in there. Their idea is to score it all. And the only scoring in the hockey game, New York Islanders. They have the one nothing lead with ten and a half minutes left in the second period. Nordic to the attack again. Cote, Paymont, and Cardiff. Scoring can't clear it out. Cote rattled it off a leg and has grappled up. The cue is the center. Gilly's going in on the left side. Back it goes to center. And let's see. Did the goal post come clear this morning? It didn't. The play carries on. Bouchard went down there rather heavily. There's an offside against Cote. Well, I'll tell you, Bouchard's getting more body checks than anybody <laughs> so far in this game. He's really getting the workout. There is a scoreboard, 1-0 for the home team here at the Nassau Coliseum, a capacity crowd. Al Arbor back behind the bench. It helps to be tall, I think, Don, when you're coaching. Some people think it can be the worst seat in the house. Watch this. Whammed in again. I'd like to know how many times Al Arbor pulls his pants up during the game. Oh, yeah. The Arnold Palmer hits. Is that yeah, that's what he's got, that little hitch. Center for New York, number 25, Carroll. He's been out there about three or four times previously. He's an expert at killing off penalties right now. He's taking a full flight turn. Here's Hunter coming in. He dropped it over on the other side. The Ross Ford shot was high and wide. Langevin clearing at the center and pouncing on it. Terry Ann. He slapped it back in. Foremost in the minds of the Nordiques now. Offense. They're moving in there. They center it into that slot area. On the right side. Out of the out. Broken up. As a tender for Carroll. Terry on is going to get a penalty. I think we are right on this when we pick the right guy. He knocked Carroll to the ice. And now the penalty will be officially assessed against Terry Ann. Hockey Night in Canada will continue in just a moment. Ontarion in the box, 10.46 here in the second period, roughing the call as we look at it again. Took the shot coming off the board, son. Well, that's fanned away. That is a penalty that you do not get in the playoffs, a retaliatory penalty. If you were coaching the Nordiques, would you be annoyed at the referee? We welcome our viewers in Western Canada to the game here at the Nassau Coliseum. 1-0, the Islanders lead. They have a power play. Danny Gallivan, take it away. And the Islanders have executed the power play very sharply. They are in the process of setting it up again. Here's McEwen taking a shot off the leg. They battle for it. Here is Bourne circling in the box. The Nordic Potvin back into Bourne. Bourne takes a look. Will he get it back to Potvin? Yes, he does. Potvin comes to the center of the blue line. Into the corner it goes. Here's Kotke. He has scored the only goal. Now Potvin is knocked down at the line. The Islanders keeping it in. Here's McEwen taking his shot. He didn't miss by very much. Hickey is knocked into the boards by Kotke. Kotke is number 19 for Quebec. He moves in. And DuPont clears it down the ice. Why does Potvin on the power play always go to the center of that? Well, he gets a better shot there, and there's, he gets more of the net when he gets in center right. And Bossy tried to get into center ice, but the four checking up. The Nordiques sent him back in there. 
54 seconds remaining in the penalty. Three Islanders in over the line. A bad pass for Bossy. Bossy couldn't pick it up. It came back on the right side. And the Nordic will kill off penalties in this second period much more proficiently than they did in the first. They're doing an excellent job here. There's Sutter coming in again to the goal. He's going to get a touch. He's going to get Just got a piece of it, Dick. Just a piece trickles in. You're not going to do much tonight. Now, watch this now. He loses a little pass. Nice little feather pass. Puts it in right between the legs. Number 91. So, a 2-0 score here at the Nassau Coliseum. The Islanders scoring both of their goals on power play. Peter Stassi over the end. Tom Stassi. And Smith out of the net. Two to nothing for the Islanders. Gillies working in on that right side on his wrong wing. Quebec coming by. Marion Stasty in over the line. Peter is trying to get in front of the net. Into the corner. And losing it was Anton Stasty. He was going to try and get it back to Ross Moore, who is defending now for Quebec against Sutter. It's back into the New York zone. Tripping call here. Dave Langevin of the Islanders is the one heading to the penalty box. Live from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, the Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC. We all chip in and help each other. Mix for a better quality product. When I stamp it, I know it's well done. Mix. And short quality, the top one. 12.59, the time of the tripping penalty called on Dave Langevin as he was involved heading down into the Islanders' zone with Marion Stastny. They both hit the deck heavily. Langevin goes to the penalty box. That scoring play, Goring is fifth from Dwayne Sutter and Pearson at 12.15. So, Don, watch very closely. The first whistle I'm going to get you to analyze the alignment out there for Quebec and what they're going to do and what they have been doing from the time I get to you. But right now... They are back in their own zone with a minute and 45 seconds left in the penalty. Goulet departed. Part of a left wing lead pass to Goulet. Race time shot. Okay, Don. Well, right away they should do that. Shoot at the side there because Billy Smith was picking cherries there again. Here comes Trotje out now to take the draw. He takes the draw. Caller go off. After he gets the draw, when the puck goes in the end, Caller will come back on. You have to have that guy with the draw. Let me ask you another thing. It seems to be the consensus that hockey people who know something about the game that the winner of the Stanley Cup will emerge from this series. Do you agree with that? I think so. I, I'd have to go along. It's put, not putting Chicago down, not putting Vancouver down, but you just have to go along with two far out. Uh, you hate to say that, but it uh, looks that way. You have to call them as you see them. Is that it, Doug? That's what I have to say. I'm stumbling around. Well, I say right now, in Vancouver, you're the most unpopular and in Chicago, too. Now it comes right in front of the net. Hot back into the center right area. Brings it in over the line, gets the shot away. There was nothing on that to cause concern to Bouchard. The Islanders moving away out there, and they pick it up. And Carroll, who just came off the bench, came within a pass of having that puck clear sailing right in on Bouchard. Down on the left wing, Peter Stasny, more or less after him. Nordiques have it in there. They can pass it back and forth now. It goes to Peter Stasny, it's the first time to man. It's turned around the foot, and it went off Smith's leg. We are down the ice by Gordy. 42 seconds, the time remaining. In the penalty to Langevin. Now into the center ice area, Peace Jets pass goes off, Bourne's leg is picked up by Cloutier, over the line, Anton Stasny going in, Boyle trying to take it, but Lane has it from behind the net. 
Lane does not get the credit he should. You never hear his name mentioned, but he's out there killing all the penalties. I thought he was just standing in this group. Remember one session down there? In his own zone, he dominated, held it, went to the corner behind the net to the other corner. Now there's Bourne breaking up a play. So there's not too much potency in the Nordiques attack. It's all over now. Langevin is under the penalty box. Here's Tardin. And again, we have four Islanders across the blue line. Pinelli, a pass, facing it to the right side. Merrick, he goes flying. Nystrom is in there. Into the corner against Gule. Pelsan, working it off the board. Into the corner, Ross Ward's watched very carefully and closely there by Nystrom and also Big Pinelli. The Nordiques coming into the center ice area. Back there to get some skating room is Tardis. And that's something that they haven't had too much of, skating room. That is the Nordiques. Oh, there's the collision. We may have a break here for skating room, but they recover quickly. Goulet trying to pass it in front. He had Hunter going in there, and it was Nystrom who broke it up. Nystrom coming back. Great wing shot. That was headed to the corner. Grabbed by Bouchard. The Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. You don't have to put up with hotel excuses like the maid, the TV man, or the plumber. There's a good shot of Trottier. Number 32 for the Nordiques. Hunter. And the Islanders, everybody up. So we're going to have new participants in the face-off. What are you going to say about the game so far, Doc? Well, uh, Trottier get, and Hunter get thrown every, out every time. There's Morrow on the board. There's a shot. That was screened, I think. Bouchard got that right arm off there. Caller number 28, he's on. For the Islanders, along with Bossy and Trottier. Up it comes on the left side. Bowler from behind the net, losing it there. Bossy severing it in. Look at Caller. And it went off his stick. I don't know whether he said knocked it off. Here's Morrow shooting it. Picked out the rebound. And Trottier couldn't pick up the rebound with Hunter down there to help Bouchard. Ken Morrow firing. He only scored once in the regular season, yet the score in the playoffs. He came close there on two occasions. Well, we'll be right back here on Thursday night for game two of this conference final. The Quebec Nordiques and the New York Islanders game two here at the Nassau Coliseum Thursday night will be on the air at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And there you see the pennant hanging over center ice here at the Nassau Coliseum, showing that the Islanders were Patrick Division champions those years, and they had Stanley Cup pennants as well, and a few thrown in for soccer and basketball at the same time. And one of the many signs around the building tonight. The reason that Hunter Trottier gets thrown out, he, each one won't give each other an inch. They get both offside, so they got to throw them out. Well, you have to admire them. Oh, they're both of terror. Now it goes in over the line, and it is icing him. We also got a, a penalty to number five. And it's Potvin, the captain, who is going to sit out a penalty. So an opportunity again for Quebec. They just need one goal to get back into the second. 16.53 the time of Potvin's hooking penalty. Done that last power play they had when Langevin was off. The Nordiques did not get the chance they want to keep get possession and hang on to it inside that Islanders blue line. Well, that's, that's the key to their power play. You have to force them. You have to force them. You can't sit back. You can't sit back with them because if you sit back, they're magicians with that puck. And uh, you have to force them gamble that they'll uh, they'll lose that puck. He wants, uh, Michel wants the penalty and wants the face off in here because he said the puck touched it in here. And I think it should be in there. But for some reason, they're bringing it away back there. They, I don't understand why the, the penalty was up here with the puck, and now they're bringing it outside the blue line here. Well, tell me, Dick or Dan. The line was indicating an icing, but if they made a mistake in that, then they'd go to center ice. Yeah. They? I thought it was an icing call which brought about the end of the play. Well, there's nothing like confusing in the playoffs. It makes it much more interesting. Now, Nordic coming down, Peter Stasny. Getting it in over the line. Brian Stasny has his work cut out against Goring. Goring is persistent, but a 
Clark comes back to the line. Cloutier. Cloutier works his way back. Now over on the side. Anton Stasny. Cloutier. He's not getting himself into position for a shot. A pass off boring stick. It was intended for Marion Stasny. Nordic keeping it in, but they're not getting into a position where they can take a good solid shot at Smith. Now it goes to Stasny Anton. To Cloutier. There's the solid box. Carroll and Goring change their position in that box formation. No shot yet. PJ. And finally, Lane will get it and fails to clear it out, but Goring knocks it out. He says stick into the center ice area. 50 seconds left in the Boston penalty. This time, Cloutier decides to shoot it in. Four. Wraps it off the board, down the ice it goes. Good defending there by the Islanders. Especially with Puck that night, their big man back there. Lane did a great job. Lane did a great job. Now, down on the right side, over on the other wing. Paymar, it's off his stick, brought in by Pardis for the offside. They almost got caught down. Anton Stassi did something that they did not do in Boston too much, that try to throw the puck across the ice during the power play. Usually against the Bruins, when they got it going, they played that ring around to Rosie. Well, yeah. that's what they had to do there. But Goring was going after them so much, he wasn't laying back. He was going after them. They have to spring somebody open over there because he's not laying back. He's going right after him. He's gambling. He was changing his spot in the box. Somebody else was taking her place, and he was moving the left. Now it is Goulet. Exactly three seconds left in the penalty. Coming down, Cloutier falls off alive. Now Goulet. The other side. Up it comes to Hudson. Over the line. Hunter takes a look to the far side. There's the shot, and Smith grabs it. Contact. Has one second left. They have nobody either side has nobody in front of the net from the shots from the point. I think you watch at the end of this period, the next period, the next time the Nordiques have a power play, if they have, they'll have a guy in front of that net because Billy Smith can see every shot from the point. Billy Smith tonight playing in his 11th playoff game. Uh, Roland Melanson played one full game and parts of two others earlier on, but Smith, as expected, has been the workhorse. There's Pot that in the box, but... Danny mentioned one second left. So Pop Van with the one second. He doesn't seem anxious. There he is. He's getting up. There. Harry threw Hunter out again. Threw them both out again. But you see what uh, Al Arbor's got. He's got Goring there in yeah. case uh, Trotche does get. So he has two centers out there. DuPont, you see him straddling the blue line. In on the other side. The other defenseman around the net. It comes to the side. And the ass expires. And now less than a minute to go in the second period. Two to nothing for Quebec is centered. Here's P.J. winding up with a screen shot. And there must have been six players in front. The shot was wide. The Dupont shot changed direction. Pearson into the corner for Trottier. Coming out slowly, top fan. Going, having words with Hunter. Dupont rolling it back into Smith. A half minute left in the second period. Going has scored in the second period. Two to nothing for the Islanders. Back it goes to Bonte. Here's Tatier slapping one high and wide. Into the corner, Dupont out on the left side to Hickey. Hickey hitting that New York line. Rifle for shot. Big rebound. And cleared by Captain Potvac into the center ice area. Dupont clearing it in. And the crowd beginning that terrific clapping. And now all on ovation for the Islanders. They lead two to nothing at the end of two. Well, Michel Bergeron looking on as the teams leave the ice. His club had a few more good scoring chances in that second period. 11-6 the shots, however, in favor of the Islanders. It's 2-0 New York. Here again is Dave Haas. 2-0 Islanders, and as of the first goal, the second for New York was on the power play, scored by Butch Goring, his fifth of the playoffs. For most of our second intermission, we will be sending you to the Chicago Stadium and pick up as much action of the Canuck Blackhawks game 
as our intermission time will allow. The score at the end of two periods of play here at the Nassau Coliseum is Islanders 2 and Quebec nothing. and all your toes. That's 24. Oh. See what a difference it makes. When you're going to be in the spotlight, don't you want an antiperspirant that goes on dry, fast, and easy? Try Men and Speed Stick Plus. It's not wet, not sticky, and it goes on fast and easy because it's wide and smooth and solid. Speed Stick Plus gives you long-lasting protection against wetness and odor. You can count on it. Men in Speed Stick Plus Antiperspirant from the makers of Speed Stick, Canada's number one stick deodorant. CBC News with George McLean. Good evening. Here is a summary of tonight's top stories. A British invasion of the Falkland Islands appears imminent. There are even unconfirmed reports that an advance party has already landed. The British public is 80% behind such an invasion, according to a poll released today. But in Argentina, there are signs that support for the military junta is weakening. Published reports indicate many people feel they're not being told the full story. Saskatchewan is still reeling from yesterday's stunning defeat of Alan Blakeney's NDP government. The Premier-elect Grant Devine now faces the task of choosing his cabinet from among 57 progressive conservative members. Most of them have never even served in the legislature before. In Nova Scotia, more than 2,000 workers went on strike at the Sydney Steel Company today, a strike that many fear could close the old plant forever. And doctors in Ontario carried out their threatened walkout today to back their demands for better pay. We'll have details on these stories and more on tonight's National Following the Game. And now back to Hockey Night in Canada. Brian Trache and Butch Goring have scored on the power play for the Islanders' 2-0 lead, which exists after two periods at the Nassau Coliseum at the Chicago Stadium. There have been two goals scored, one for each team. In the first period, Thomas Gradine put the Vancouver Canucks up 1-0, and then Terry Ruskowski tied it for Chicago. They're now early in the second period. We'll send you there with Don Whitman and Gary Dornhofer. At this time, we welcome those who have been viewing the Quebec Islander game with 41 seconds left in the penalty to Dave Hutchison of the Blackhawks. And the score tied at one at Chicago Stadium. Vancouver is guilty on the power play of an icing infraction. Thomas Gradine scoring for Vancouver. Terry Ruskowski for Chicago. Both goals in the opening period. 16.35 is the time remaining in the second period. Good action in front of that Chicago Blackhawk goal. Well, both teams during the power play have had that man in front trying to do their best to screen the goaltenders. That has been the story tonight, is especially Richard Brodeur, who faced 17 shots in the opening period. Aldebrain puts it around to Hallward. 30 seconds remaining in the penalty to Hutchison. 
The Canucks having some difficulty now after applying pressure in the opening seconds. Hallward with a long drive, gloved by Esposito and slipped down the ice. Aldebrink chases it back of his own goal. Lead pass into the center ice area. Nell trying to feed it back, gets it to Hallward over to the other side. Aldebrink drive deflected off Boulder FY. Out front again, back to the line. Hallward with a drive, and Esposito hangs on. And the uh, Blackhawks are back at full strength. Well, that's the type of goaltending that we've seen in Chicago Stadium tonight. A capacity crowd created to excellent play. The veteran Esposito with 74 regular season shutouts. Six in the playoffs. And Richard Brodeur, who has been outstanding, especially in that first period. 15.55, the time remaining in the second period. A capacity crowd at Chicago Stadium. The official attendance is 17,263, but they expected close to 21,000 or more in attendance tonight. Isaac plays it around the boards for Bully. Bellin beats him to it. Bellin keeps it in. Bolderev couldn't get a shot away, and Bully comes out with it for Chicago. And Bellin. Got a stick on it to steal it away and dump it to center ice. Now in the neutral zone. Wilson has to wait for Lysiak, who had fallen, to get back on side. So he had to go back into his own zone. It fired into Vancouver territory. Allen's up along the boards. Nil couldn't get it out. Wilson with a drive. It's wide. He can really rip it from the point. Kept in by Murray. Smith goes into the corner. He's being pressured. Up along the boards. Racing in from the point is Murray. Lysiak also comes in, and they force a face-off in the Vancouver zone. Well, the hitting has picked up in the second period. That's what we had expected. Players from both teams talked about it. Boulder Ave, a former Chicago Blackhawk. His scoring will certainly be needed in this series if the Canucks are to advance to the Stanley Cup final. Ivan Boldarev has had a somewhat disappointing season offensively this year for the Canucks. He has done an outstanding defensive job for Vancouver. He responded, however, in game four of the playoff series with Los Angeles, picking up a pair of goals in a Canuck victory. He and Darcy Rhoda, former members of the Chicago Blackhawks, and the crowd now beginning to send up the sound of Let's go hot. Campbell in his own zone over to the other side. Dumped into the center ice area. A long drive and it's fired back in by Mulvey. Gloved to the corner by Brodeur. Now Fox in his own zone. Tried to dump it out. It was brought in offside by Brasser. This is Hockey Night in Canada from Chicago Stadium. The ultimate offer. As proof of the confidence Ford has in the quality of their cars, the great three-part offer is now extended to cover ten car lines. You get two years scheduled maintenance. That gives you two years parts and labor at no extra cost. You'll also get a comprehensive two-year warranty. So for two years, virtually all you pay for is gas. And to top it off, buy now and get a special 5% cash bonus up to $500. The ultimate offer is the closest thing to cost-free driving. Details at Ford and Mercury dealers. When the Crusaders won the championship, some people thought the new Cooper All Protective System gave them an unfair advantage. So what? Unfair? Sure, Cooper All gives you a great new look, a new freedom of movement, and more comfort. But it's based on an old idea. Better protection. And there's nothing unfair about that. You see, if we protect you better, we think you play better. Right, guys? Right! Cooper All. From Cooper. Be your best. No matter what we tell you, we carry. Whenever we say Canadian Tire, you think... So a lot more to Canadian Tire than tires. In the land of Dairy Queen. We're in the 
second intermission at the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. The score as you see it, Islanders 2 and the Quebec Nordiques nothing. And we will continue with our coverage of second period action from the Chicago Stadium. The Canucks and the Blackhawks opening the Campbell Conference final there. Let's return to Don Whitman and Gary Dornhofer. And back into the center ice area and into his own zone. Rose Moline now ahead for Gradine and it's stolen away by Sharkley for Savard. Savard racing in, flat shot, loved by Brodeur. He holds it for the faceoff. And now for another demonstration how quick that Dennis Savard is. And don't you think for a minute that every time he's out there, the Canucks are very wary of his tremendous skills, the acceleration, just in one motion. He's got that open ice area, and he's getting a good shot on that. Brodeur struggles with that just momentarily and is able to adjust and glove it for the faceoff. Leading scorer this season for the Hawks, 119 points for Denny Savard. Beamster from the line right on with the drive. Picked up in the corner by Bolderev, ahead for Fraser. Bolderev comes in and finally pokes it free. It goes down the ice. This will produce an icing call. And Gary, let me correct something I believe I said earlier about Bolderev. He had a big season, 33 goals. I believe I said he struggled during the season. He struggled during the early part of the playoff the and the then playoff, got two right? goals against Los Angeles. Yeah, we certainly don't want to take anything away from the type of year that Bolderev had. And again, reminds me a lot of Lysiak. Both of them have the ability to carry the puck into the offensive zone and set up those plays. That's the strength for both their teams. Brodeur almost had that one slip away from him. He dove on it in the crease after he misplayed the puck at the side of the net. Oh, that was a close one. You know, Don, there is a good case in point that the bad bounce from the board, but where is the guy going for that net? Had the Blackhawks had somebody going for the net, they would have had that rebound and a sure goal. But the Blackhawks, Higgins especially, was pulling out, thinking the Canucks would gain control. Beamster into the center ice area, picked up by Lysiak across the line. He drops it back for Fox. He fires it in back at the goal. Brodeur out of there to play it up along the board. Kept in by Feimster. Now Higgins at the line, having some difficulty with Bolderev. Bolderev takes it away from him and dumps it to center ice. It's played back in offside by Chicago. What's the score? Vancouver won, Chicago won. This is Stanley Cup 82. Leaf Man have just bought the 1982 Lawn Boy Supreme, designed to last up to 50% longer than most other mower engines. An incredible 5 and one mower. ABC's in one, two, three. Beef ravioli. Relax. What you got there, pal? Oh, oh Harry, it's uh, Stanley Garage Door Opener. The town can die when they ain't got protection. Well, the folks around here wouldn't buy that. So, I went ahead and bought my own res wood sink. Res protection lasts because res grinds its color so fine that it gets right into the wood and sticks better. Buy res protection, I said. But they wouldn't listen. And where are they now? <laughs> Kmart. We're celebrating our 20th anniversary with... The Stanley Cup. Since 1917, NHL teams have been playing for this, their most coveted award. And since the first hockey telecast 30 years ago on CBC, we've been following the action and watching them win. The Stanley Cup. The tradition continues on CBC. One period remaining in regulation. 
Ice and Time. The teams are coming back onto the ice at the Nassau Coliseum. The New York Islanders leading the Quebec Nordiques by a score of 2-0. And Don Cherry, this has been kind of a strange hockey game. There hasn't been really any flow of play. The Nordiques aren't putting out offensively like we thought they might, but I don't think the Islanders are playing all that well tonight. No, it was a funny thing. They went out in the first five minutes, and they were going to knock each other off the ice, and it's been like that. It hasn't been, like you say, no flow at all. There's been a few power plays, and that's how, well, That's the only thing. Bouchard is holding Quebec in there right now. Quebec has to win it with offense. This is what everybody says. They're an offensive team. Obviously, their defense has been better in the playoffs, but are the Islanders keying on this? Are they doing a basic good job defensively? Well, yeah, killing the penalties and that. They're having that box tight. They're going right after them. Like I said, they're not sitting back. They're going after them, and that's the only way to play them. You can't let the Sassies have the puck. Don, finally, an Al Arbor coach team. What was it like coaching against him? Well, you knew no mistakes. You got me a few times. <laughs> okay, Don. Well, the power play goals have accounted for all of the scoring. It was Brian Trotcha, his fifth of the playoffs, from Pertzon and Denny Potvin at 529. That was in the first period. Then in the second period, the second power play goal for New York, Goring his fifth of the playoffs from Dwayne Sutter and Pertzon at 1215. The shots through two periods, 24-14 in favor of the Islanders. Okay, here again, Danny Gallivan. Okay, Dick, and of course that statistic indicates to you that once again, brilliant in the net for Quebec Bouchard. 24 shots by the Islanders, and they have been productive on two. And there you see Aubrey, he's at center, number 27, Paymaw's on the right wing. And now we have Anton Stasny over on the far side. Goring is on the ice. He's up and to that the line, and you can always count on Goring in the playoffs to come up with something big. 150% all the time. So oh, here's Paymont coming in over the line, and he's just that great shot. That gave Smith some difficulty with that great reflex action. He got the right pad out there and then covered up. What's going to happen here? Who's arguing well, with Paymont? Well, Paymont, give it to uh, pushed uh, Wilf Pickmott in the face, and Wilf stood there as if he could not believe it that he would do that to him. Now watch this now. He gets a good shot away, snaps around there. That's what you call a good snap shot. Billy Smith has been up to every shot so far, and right after that play, Wilf got a little tap in the face. Billy comes up with those big saves all the time. And everybody says he's been playing mediocre, but uh, he makes the saves then. We well, saw the statistics there, and we alluded to the money type of goaltender in the playoffs. You mentioned Cheever as well. And, well, uh, Dryden, let's face it, a big octopus, he killed, killed us how many times? Well, I'll tell you one thing, he really killed you in 1971. Well, not you, <laughs> but I mean, he killed the uh, <laughs> Yes, he the did. Boxes. He did kill me. I was gone after that, Dan. <laughs> Morrow. Over to McEwen on the left side, Bourne. Back there is Aubrey. So the Nordique needs something in an offensive way to get back into this hockey game. They're down two to nothing. Now Bossy, backhand shot by Trottier. And they work so well together, 19 and 22. You saw Trottier come from nowhere to get in there. Now it's Pichette coming back. He's broken up by Morrow ahead to Trottier. He got the pass into the center ice area. Good move on the right side by Anton Stasny, but he couldn't penetrate completely. Stepping in over the line. There's Dupont along the board. He'd like to get a pass in front. Coming in was Hunter. Now he goes to the corner, and the puck is on the left side. Comes to center. Nordiques are on it again. Arion takes that long shot wide. Nice from him there to pick it up. He's been watched by Hunter. Into the corner. Cloutier couldn't corral it. Bourne coming out to Trottier over to Nystrom. But the Bourne broken up. And the Nordique coming in over the line. Here's Goulet dropping it to Steria. Yeah, there's the shot nowhere near the net. And that goes off the board. Goes all the way down the ice. Would you say the Islanders are executing the fundamentals very well in this for a playoff game? It's a textbook type of game. Now here's Cloutier coming in. There's the shot. And that makes Smith up. From the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, this is Stanley Cup 82 on CBC. I've lost my crown, my people, my fortune, but I can still look smart. And I do. In my era, smooth shirt from Arrow. Look at this color, perfection, and it's specially designed to stay perfect. 
I even get my exact sleeve length. What quality? Arrow smooth. Fit for a king at a price any ex-king can afford. Reasonably priced arrow smooth in white and plain colors. You don't have to give up a fortune to look smart. I'm Nick Irvin with Danny Gallivan, Don Cherry, and Dave Hodge. This is game one of the Wales Conference final series between Quebec and the Islanders. The Islanders have a 2 nothing lead. We are early in the third period. And, John, they are playing a sound game, I think. Up and down. Troche takes those draws. Important draws in your own end in the third period when you're up 2 nothing. And there is Lane behind the net. Four checking for the Nordiques. Harry and Stasky. Now he goes after the last of there for target. He was offended by Potsdam. The Islanders clearing it in. Over on the other side, Peter Stotney. Sutter took a run at him. And the boards took a terrible beating, but Stotney eluded the body of Bourne completely. Now up on the left side into the center right area. He checked. He hands it off. A move by Tardiff. He was upended again. And it is Potvin turning through center right. Is Gillies. He was checked, but it was offside. It's tough to figure out where Mark Tardiff is involved in the Nordic scheme of things. He plays as a regular, then suddenly he's sitting out. He missed three games during the Boston series. Came back for game seven. Didn't play all that much, though. I don't think he was on the ice at all in the third period. Now he's playing on a regular shift here tonight. Stories that he's in the doghouse, out of the doghouse with the Nordiques official well, family. The rap is, Dick, he doesn't come to play all the time. And I guess Bergeron says if you're not going to play, and that's one thing that impresses me about Bergeron, he will not wait with anybody. If you're not playing, you will sit. Got the three Stassis together again. Hasn't played them together all that much tonight. Regular uh, full strength. Carry on, clearing it in. And the Stasby's moving in, trying to pick it up. There's Peter, body by Trottier. Cleared it to the other side. Harry Ash hands it off to Murray and Stasby, and it's shot down the ice by Lee. Back four goes finally Ross Poor, who makes the contact with the puck, and it's icing. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. Czechoslovakian connection out there for Quebec right now. Reminder that today overseas in Finland, Team Canada defeated Czechoslovakia 4-2. Canada still has a chance for a silver medal in that tournament. So the Islanders shoot it down the ice. And there's another icing call. And this is... I think there should be a more severe penalty. People come here, they want into end action. Why should a team who is being pressed have the right and the opening for a mere face off to shoot it down the ice? Well, you'll have to take that up with John Stigler. <laughs> I have news for you, Don. I, I get a better reception from you. And that, that, that's the way it should be. There it is, back to Rochefort. That's the point. Lane has it again. Rochefort is going to pick it up, and he fanned on it. Now Peter Stasi, it rolls in front, and Lane gets it into the centerized area. Here's Bourne digging down diligently on that left side. Around the net, takes a look, gets it back. A wind-up, a shot by Lane. A rising shot high and wide. Carry out. 
It's one to lead by Crossier. Corn, Jazz, Perriot in on the board. Here's Bossy. Bossy plays it over the other side to Potvin. Back into Bossy. He fires it. And an enormous save there by Bruce Church. You know, you've heard the expression point blank range to rebound. Another shot by Bossy. Here's Warren trying to get it. Well, that first shot goes to point blank range. And a brilliant save. Gostowski is going in. Knocked away by Smith. The action picking up. The Islanders three of them into the center ice area. It dropped back. There's the shot. And it was high and wide by Crossier. In on the board. Mario Stotsny and Khan over on the far side. It goes finally to Weir. He cleared it in over the Islanders line. Four minutes and 45 seconds have gone by in the third period. Two to nothing for the Islanders. A head fake on the right side. I center did not fool Weir. Now back into the center right area and back at the line. Langevin to Pearson. Back to Langevin. A splendid move there to work into the center right area. Over the line. Callers centers it. Good reach there by Pichette. And it's clear over the glass. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. Round, 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 round. It gets around. It gets around to the best parties in town. I always take my pleasure back because it's real well done. Export and Canadian. You just can't go wrong. High 12 gone in the third period regulation time. 2 0 Islanders leading Quebec. Islanders with their defense of Pelsa and Langevin playing up. Back to Langevin. Here is Keller. He's collared in the corner along the board. By that man there, Pichette, who lost it into the center right area to Pema. Pema has excellent move into the corner. Rand in on the board by Langevin. Gordy sending everybody up. Here's Pema. He passed it through the lip of the crease area. Now it's cleared back in there by Aubrey. Pressure here by the Nordiques on the board. Let's see, is somebody on the puck? No, it's loose. We're in behind the net. And then a hopped over Paymon stick. And it's clear down the ice. See that down the picture. Gentlemen, we had a bit of news today out of the National Hockey League office in Montreal with the resignation from the NHL of our longtime friend Ron Andrews, who has been the league's director of information, keeping stats and people like Wilf Paymont. Low these many years, Ron has accepted the job as the sports director of a new radio station that's opening up in Ottawa in the fall. So we wish him well. I know that people, not only you and I, Danny, but the viewers have benefited more than a little bit from Ron's knowledge and his help on our shows over the years. I did too, Dick. <laughs> and Ron, we congratulate him. He'll make a check. Sports director, he'll be after everybody for interviews to say we're after him. There's Terria. The rebound. And there it. Let's see. Interference call here, Doug. With the star, the Islanders 2, the Nordics nothing. This is Stanley Cup 82 on CBC. When it comes to feeling young, a lot of it's up here. Three years ago, Maurice Richard said goodbye, gray hair, hello, Grecian Formula 16. It was so easy, remember? Grecian is as easy to use as water. Works for any color hair. The change was so gradual and looked so natural, no one even noticed. Today, I still leave a touch of gray. The wife likes it. Hey, Richard, two minutes for looking so good. Look as young as you feel with Grecian Formula 16, liquid or cream. With Brian Trotty of the Islanders off for interference at 6-11 here in the third period. Down another chance for Quebec in the power play. But in this period, are they that much better? Or are the Islanders sort of going into that protect the 2-0 lead shell? You don't want to do that. Everybody says they're sitting on a lead. But it happens an awful lot. Now they better start shooting it. In front, Quebec. This passing around murdering them on this power play. You say you don't want to do it. Is it actually? the puck in the corner and he shoots it down the ice. There's nothing actually. 
talking about that. That is a thing that you think about and you do. <laughs> Come yeah. on, Don. No, it's, it's subconscious. You don't want to do it, but you do it because you can see there's 13 minutes left. You, you don't want to do it, and you say don't do it when you get on the bench, then you go out there and do it. So the power play. Let's see how it will operate now for Quebec in on the board. Marion Stassi. Mins against Peter Stassi. He's tied up on the boards by Carroll. And it's shot down the ice. Okay, tell us something now about this power play. You're the coach. What do you Should they shoot it in more? They should get some more shots. Get a guy in front. But you know what really strikes me? Even in the Boston series, the boys of Quebec, they never get rattled. They just keep coming at you. Sign of a good club. They are an excellent hockey club. Quebec, Gordy. Here he is. Shoots that big rebound. There he is. Over on the other side. Back it goes to number 10. There's a shot by Stassi. offer to turn the import world upside down. It's on the new size Ford Ranger. Ranger offers a two-year comprehensive warranty and two-year scheduled maintenance at no extra cost. Every goal tonight on a power play. Quebec has just scored there. Peter Stassi from Marianne Stassi and Ferrian at 7.02. Special team. Special team. Go win a play. And the Nordics go to the attack again. Rossier turning on the right side. Langevin had to get him. Good forward checking here by the Nordics. They force the puck back in over the line. Now Pearson gives it to Langevin. He stops. It's recovered by Pearson. Rossier falls. Over on the wing, Bossy. They can't complete the pass as the Islanders against the checking of the Nordics. That was a long shot by Paymont. Over on the left side in his own zone, Gillies is given a jolt along the board. Puck into the center ice area, Bossy. Had to pass it back to get away from Tardin. Back it comes to Bossy. Coming in on his wrong wing. He tries to clear it in there. Off the board. Here's Tardin coming in over the line. Drops it back. Lutte elected to pass it over on the far side to Hunter. He may have been able to take a shot, even though it would have been well out. But he has a good shot number nine. Now well, there's John Tonelli, a couple of big goals to his credit this year for the Islanders. The winning goal when they won their 15th straight game to establish an NHL record. And then the overtime winning goal when they eliminated Pittsburgh, a series they came oh so close to losing in the first playoff round. Tell me a, a goalie isn't important. Bouchard holds him in there for two periods. Now they got a chance in the game. Most important guy in any sport. And right now we have the Nordics with their defenseman in over the line. Perrion's over on this right point. Hunter tried to get a shot, got a weak one away. More to Nystrom. Nystrom picks it up, goes back in there. Here's Merrick, the back pass to Nystrom. After him is Tardis. And 
the Nordiques doing an excellent job at this particular juncture of the game, staying right on top of the Islanders, picking off passes as you saw right there, working down on the left side, Hunter over the line. Luke is trying to get in front. Here come the Islanders, McEwen ahead to Mary with Cinelli and Nystrom. Back it goes to McEwen, backhand shot. And it was over the top of the net. In there goes Tardin. Terry Ann, up to the line. Lutier takes the look, they crisscross with Hunter coming over the other side. A head fake there by Lutier, he almost got seven stop. He checks, the big defenseman, up in over the line, good play. Barney is hooked away. Center, hits the Quebec line. Staying with him, taking it in on the boards, heavily weird. Back into the corner, in front of him, Right hand by Bouchard. Right arm. Live from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, the Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC. We've been telling you that you can get a lot more Canadian Tire than tires. Like Daiwa fishing gear. Sure, a sporting goods store might have Daiwa, but only Canadian Tire has these Daiwa Silver Series rods and reels. There's a lot more to Canadian Tire than tires. getting a goal. One each the first and second. Nordiques in the third. Now the Nordiques coming in. They go for it on the left side. And Sutter knocked it into the centerized area. That's Dwayne, the bearded guy, number 12, spinning around. Pichet knocked it to center. Dwayne Sutter clearing it in. Gilly going in. Pichet watching in. There you have two big men. But they were colliding there, as you saw rather gently. No harm of the physical nature was inflicted. Here's Lane. Lane clearing it ahead on the right side to Sutter. He runs into Weir. Marion Stasny struggling with Gilly. Picked up by Anton Stasny. Scoring balls and Lane will clear it into the centerized area. So for the past eight or nine minutes, no question about it, the Nordiques have, have been the more aggressive. Did that leave you speechless, Mr. Sherry? There it is, it comes back over on the far side. Don will be there to comment on that in a moment. Now it goes to the corner. There's Bossy, picked off by the Nordic. There he is going to get another whipping shot, but he was wide by four or five feet. Rottier shoots at the center. Nordic's on it again. Back at the line. DuPont clearing it up. The teams are making changes while the play goes on. And there are 8 minutes and 42 seconds remaining in regulation time. The Islanders to the back one. Rottier tipped it in over the line. Here's DuPont. The pass was too high for Aubrey. The number 27, Paymont, coming in against Langevin. There's on to the other side. An excellent pass to Keller. Keller dropping it back. There's a hard shot by Brian Sutter. Up at the line. Carroll's able to keep it in, struggling to go to center. Nordic, Paymon took the pass from Goulet. Paymon is around the net, jammed into the board. Carries on, back it goes to Rossmore, and finally is poked into the centerized area. In on the left side, good work by Carroll. He's under the radio. Excellent scoring opportunity by Sutter. He was coming in on that Carroll pass. He flipped it. And he just missed the gaping side of the Quebec net. Seven minutes and 36 seconds left in regulation time. In over the line, Hunter back to Cloutier. Turn is trying to take it away. Now Cloutier, he's knocked to the ice. Good solid check. By Carroll, number 25. He seems to do everything. Now the Nordic coming back in there. Not many whistles right here. Tarnit bolts it to the side of the net. Backhand shot by Cloutier. And Smith was there to cover up. Nystrom. Ahead to Merrick. He lost it. Tarnit left it there for Rossford to the other side. Nystrom is hopping in on that right wing. In there to hop on is Merrick. Nystrom trying to get it. They'll get a whistle here. 
This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. Run with the Wolf Pack. The 1982 Evinrude Wolf Pack. Outboard power that ranges far and wide from the gentle two horsepower Cub to the wild big 235 Silver Wolf. Evinrude, first with many outboard innovations. Providing compact, quiet, fuel efficient power for 1982. Run with Evinrude. First in outboard. Available now at your Evinrude dealer. Bruins is looking in. They can say to the New York Islanders, welcome to the club, boys. This Quebec team wasn't supposed to go very far in the playoffs. Here they are. They hang tough. They hang tough. They don't get excited. Rely on Bouchard or Garrett, and then they go. Now Tonelli trying to get it in front. And that was a fine defensive play by number 10, Therrien. He is prominent in this game tonight. Gordy coming back in into the corner. A good move from the corner area. Drop back. We are out. by Smith on that shot from the line the number two. Weir. That's exactly what I mean. Goes along. He's doing all right. What a save. That was as good as any. Watch this. Look at that. Pull it right out of the net. Always comes up. Five minutes to go in the game if it's 2-1. That's the kind of goalie that wins the championship. You know, this sort of situation reminds me of a cute story in the paper here today. They compared this series to a scene in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid with Paul Newman and Robert Redford when they were being chased by a posse and Butch turns to Sundance and says, who are these guys anyway? <laughs> <laughs> like the, the Nordiques aren't supposed to be here. Well, they are supplying the answer tonight. There it goes, a shot by DuPont. Get up! Face off feedback, just exactly Get where up. he was, and that was a par three screen shot by number 28, and Smith was hugging the post and made the save. Here's Bossy working it down on that right side. Pichet is after him. It's a little bit. They are flashing a sign on the center ice board saying, thanks, we needed that. Here it is, Don. Watch Potvin sneaking in there now. He sneaks in like that. Nobody picks him up. When you have the three Stassi brothers on, now watch, Bossy goes to the outside. Alf got his forwards going to the outside, drops it in a little blind, Potvin moves in and puts it in. Now when Michel puts the three Stassis out there, you're either going to get a goal or you're going to have a goal scored against you, so he gambles, and the goal was against them because they do not check in their end. They have no idea how to check in their end. But look out in the other end. Potvin has always had that great anticipation, that great sense of timing. And he scored a lot of goals like that. He gets that one from Bossy and Bourne at 13.46. Shake their hands. 3-1 New York. And many of the fans here feel that that is the, the Islanders, the victory, because, oh, heck, I'd say a couple of thousand people are leaving the Coliseum. Slap down the ice. This could be icing against Quebec with more back there. 3-1 the score. The island is leading. Well, this third period has been the best period of the hockey game with the Nordiques coming back. And we'll have more of the same for you Thursday. Game two in this series here at the Nassau Coliseum. We'll be on the air at 8 o'clock Eastern time. The Islanders and the Nordiques. Don, did you get around to making a comment on the observation I made earlier that the Nordiques came on in very strong fashion well, in the third period. Well, they had to. He told them, hey, this is the end. you got to get a goal. But I want everybody to notice when the wingers are coming down, how they go to the outside of the defense. And there is a stutter shot off the leg. Arion cleared it up on the left side to Goulet along with Aubrey and Pema. Goulet cutting in a hoppy save by Spitz. He made that look more difficult than there was. Well, He's like Jerry Cheever's a little uh, shovel. A little bit.
This is Dick Irvin at the Nassau Coliseum in on Long Island, along with Danny Gallivan, Don Cherry, and Dave Hodge. 541 remaining in regulation time. And it's a 3-1 Islanders lead. They have just scored a very important third goal. Denny Potvin scoring it after the Quebec Nordiques had scored a power play goal to make it 2-1 and come very close to tying the hockey game. And Trache out to take the draw on his own end. Al never leaves anything to chance. He's safe all the time. It's shot into the center ice area, and there goes Trache off. And now Big Gillies will come on. He's on with Goring and Sutter. Look at that Goring. He's all over the ice. He never stops, and it pays off. Now the Nordiques at the line. Kept in there by Pema. Morrow shoots it into the center ice area. And it's rolled down on the right wing by Pema. Inadvertently, he got it back into his own zone. The big defenseman number 29, Pete Shed, hits the line. Shooting it into the corner. Smith anticipated that his playoff record is 52 and 21. That's a pretty good record. Not too shabby. Let me just say a little more about uh, the wingers going wide. Quebec, I'm not knocking them. They're big. They're not that mobile. Instead of trying to go through them or trying to do anything else, they go, they get to the inside and then go to the outside and walk around them like Bossy did that time. That's what they do all the time rather than try to go at them. There's Michelle trying to figure out what's going on. Get another goal here and you're right back into it. Well, our Western viewers have joined us uh, at this point of our hockey game and I can tell you that Billy Smith has come up like Billy Smith in the last two years in the playoffs here in this third period. He has made some excellent stops. Exactly five minutes left in regulation time. Gucci is number nine. He tried to get it. It's stopped at the line. Finally rolled in there. Under slides it centered. Actually, it was stopped by Gucci. Here's nice one coming down. He's in over the line. Takes his time. He rolls it in there. That is the signal now. For the Islanders to make changes up front with four minutes and 37 seconds left in the third period. It's on in, rolling back into New York territory. Three to one. The Islanders leading. Now down on the left side. Canelli barges in there. He's through here a bit for New York. Wayne Merrick from right out in front of the goal crease, and he slipped that one right through Dan Bouchard's leg. And now he did the spade work on that one. All the people go over. All the players go over at Pat Tonelli. He works in those corners. He gets in those corners. Oh, it's 15-40. That was the fourth goal. Islanders now pulling away, but they had to do it late. It was a close third period right through until... The Potvin goal at 13.46. Now the Merrick goal at 15.40. Finale on the assist. So the Islanders have taken a big 4-1 to one lead. With 4 minutes and 20 seconds remaining, it's 1-1 Chicago and Vancouver. And hockey chroniclers who will record the story of the 1981-82 season in hockey will have to reserve some space for the brilliant showing, particularly in the last 18 games by that Vancouver team. What do we got here, Dick? The replay of that goal as we see Tonelli fight off the check of Terrian down that left side. Weir had to cut over. No defense man in front. Merrick in the clear, and he beats Bouchard from close range. Marion Stastny trying to get it. There's Lane to the other side. Bossy into the centerized area. Trotsky was checked by Peter Stastny. Now he's back in over the line with Marion Stastny. Lane blocked it. Peter Stastny gets it. He centered it right in front. Here's Pichet. Down goes Smith. He comes up with it, apparently. Now Dave Pichet got the winning goal in the Boston Series in Game 7 Sunday when he drilled a good wrist shot. That was on a power play. Right here, it looked as though he moved in and tried to deep Billy Smith. Here he comes. You don't see him in this tight this very often. No room, I guess, as he pulled to the forehand. Smith with the save. 
It'll be all right to get him out going into the playoffs. Farther, farther they go, better he'll get. He's out of your picture now, number 29, Pichette. He's waiting for it to come back. It never does. It's around the net. There's McHugh to the other side. Banning on it, trying to keep it in was Anton Stasny. Bossy is in over the line. Bourne is racing to a position to the side of the net. He got it. Now it's Trotsky setting it up back on the right side. Morrow clearing it in there. Into the corner for the Nordic. He said headman that puck into the center ice area. The Stasny's coming in. They chopped by shot, and that was Marion chopping it wide. The angle, however, was rather severe. Rottier rolling it in there. Back into the center ice area, Rochefort. That goes to Hickey to the other side. Long shot by McCray's up there, I think, for about the third time tonight. A two-on-one break. Sutter in over the line was going in. First shot. Bouchard played that quick and waited for the Sutter. They're down. They got away on it. And McCray comes up with it for Quebec. Into the center ice area now. Back at his line of that center with that head fake is Hickey. Over the line to McCray. 4-1. The Islanders meeting here in this opening game of the series. Nordic trying to center it. They have difficulty against the pesky number 91. That's Gordon. In there goes Morrow. The break bumped him rather gently. McHugh and around the net. Cut right in front. Out on the left side. Gilly couldn't get it. It's back into New York territory. And the Nordiques and the Islanders are making changes. Well, more of what was a capacity crowd here at the Coliseum moving out. There's a shot. Hard shot by Tonelli. Ducking. He went off. I think Bouchard just above the crossbar. Obrey coming in on the left side. They play it into the corner. Tonelli doubles it to the other side. Less than two minutes remaining. Mary coming down. Harry um, didn't succeed in stopping him. It's to the other side. Nystrom spinning away from Weir. Here's Finelli working diligently. Gives it to Merrick. He can't center it against Oakley. Do they get a whistle here? Yes, they do. It's time going up in behind the glass. Edmonton loves the Islanders. They didn't last year. One thing we didn't mention, Don, sometimes it's a factor, sometimes it isn't. The Nordiques played their emotional seventh game in Boston just 48 hours ago. The Islanders have been off since last Friday night when they eliminated the Rangers. But, it, you know, you think, well, the, uh, the Nordiques are going to be the team that tires, and maybe they have for these last few minutes, but the third period has been their best period. Absolutely, and uh, just because they lost tonight, remember the games in Boston, it doesn't mean a thing. They don't seem to quit. That's what I like about them. They just keep coming on, grinding it out. Now it is back to Langevin. Keller along the board. He was tied up by Therion. Keller going after Theria again. And they hold it there. Let's see. We may have a free-for-all here. Let us hope not at this stage in the hockey game. It started as a very rough body belting hockey game down but then tapered off as the second period wore off and into the third well they were really pumping one another i'll tell you just a little push and shoving going on down there but i'll tell you there was body checks that first 10 minutes like you said they stayed down the islanders to come on but dick i don't think the islanders i don't think al arbor when he goes into the dressing room tonight is going to be very elated about the whole thing and they've won the game and there's no there's no um not putting them down or anything, but they didn't look that well, I don't think. No, I agree. I've seen them play some excellent hockey this year in two of the three games they played against Montreal, the games I saw them, they, the two they won, and they were just terrific, you know. But tonight, I agree. Not the greatest, and I think Arbor will feel that just that way. I've had penalties called here. Pema has gone to the Quebec dressing room. The Brent Sutter, was it, who... Yeah, you know what's got me, Dan? The, thing, the guy that I noticed that hasn't really stood out like he has in the past, well, like one is Bossy, but I think Bossy's hurt. I think they're not telling us enough. But Gillis has not really dominated the way he has the last couple of years. It looks like everybody's got the word, leave him alone now. Well, you must admit they started in brisk and impressive fashion. 
but they tapered off. And in the third period, although they've gotten the goals, Quebec has been very impressive, as Dick has pointed out. There's Hunter shooting it. Smith has to come up with some big saves in this period, Don. Last minute to play in the period. Final minute. So there's the announcement. On the final minute of play, and that brings us down now to 52 seconds, 4-1 the score. The Islanders leading, there's Hunter Brown to get into the corner area. Hickey played it to the other side. Big Weir moved in from his left point. Here's Hickey trying to slide it in front. And the Islanders, here's on to Keller. Carroll was tied up. Coming back, Hunter, he was stopped at the line by Keller into the centerized area. Carroll, very valuable man for the Islanders. The color clearing it in there. There he is. With Audrey and Kofi, the three of them in over the line, a move there by Terry Ann. The main was back there, number 24, 26. Solid, solid. Long shot. Three seconds to call on the offside. He's not, as you mentioned, a spectacular hockey player, but he does the job in a fashion that is effective and uh, not too showy. Well, nobody ever talks to him. You never see a write-up in the paper, the magazines or anything about him, but he's always there killing the penalties. And you know, people say, well, he scored in the power play and things like that. I always considered killing the penalties as important as the power play, if not more important. So there is Smith. He'll probably not get another shot in this game. The face-off is in the centerized area. Very close to the red line. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. The game is over, and the Islanders have won the first game in this best-in-seven series. Score 4-1 over Quebec Nordic, but it is just the first game. Well, it shows how that third period went. In the overall shots on goal, the Islanders outshot the Nordiques 32 to 20. But in the third period, it was 14 to 8 in favor of Quebec. So, as Don pointed out, that was the period the Nordiques came to life and made a game out of it through until the Islanders got those two goals late in the period. So, a 4-1 win for the Islanders over the Nordiques. This is Stanley Cup 82 from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. Off to put out another fire, Griswold. Uh, well, Chief, I found that I... I assume you called first. Right, flight book. Oh. Uh -huh. Cars rented. Uh -huh. Got the best room in town. I see. And Max has reserved my usual table. And? And then I called our customer and straightened out the whole mess by long distance. Stick around, Griswold. You'll go far. Business long distance. Today's way to operate. Now, at People's Jewelers, Pulsar Quartz Technology, accuracy to seconds a month. Pulsar Quartz Elegance, slender designs with diamond accents. The miracle of Pulsar is the price, $79.50 to $250 or less. Now, there is no reason to spend more or settle for less. Pulsar Quartz, always a beat beyond, in technology, in value. Now available at People's Jewelers throughout Canada. You know you've wanted a home for a long time now. How can we afford it? And we're gonna help you get it somehow. We're taking off our jackets, rolling up our sleeves, putting the strength of number one behind you. Put the skill and experience of Canada's largest real estate network to work for you. North America's number one. The Islanders open this Stanley Cup semifinal with a victory. There were some anxious moments, perhaps, in the third period after Quebec closed the gap to one goal. But the Islanders end up winning uh, relatively eased up by a score of 4-1. to one. Our three stars, number one star, Billy Smith, who was as sharp as he's been in uh, several playoff games, making 27 stops. Star number two, Dennis Potva, who eased that tension with the third Islanders goal. He also had an assist in the first period on the opening goal for the Islanders and number three star Butch Goring who scored the actual game winner the second star for the Islanders first two Islander goals on power plays and Nordiques did get their goal on a power play there is one difference there also seemed a physical domination at times by the Islanders which helped this four to one victory we'll return with our Stanley Cup playoff coverage in just a moment you know what I 
I've got a reason to switch to Bank of Montreal. I had a regular savings account, but I usually make my deposits somewhere in the middle of the month. Somebody's got a special cargo. Somebody's muffler's hanging low. One of the 27 saves made tonight by Billy Smith and perhaps the most spectacular in the third period of play. Smith has gone most of the way in the playoffs this season for the Islanders, save one game by Roland Melanson and a couple of brief respites, uh, some Al Arbor strategy. Billy, this team has won two Stanley Cups now, and I tend to think you're judged by that. Uh, the reviews through the Pittsburgh series, certainly, and uh, through the Rangers series in, in some fashion, tended to say that the Islanders weren't playing as well as they could, and I, I have a feeling that might be said again tonight. Is it getting to the point where it's tough to top what you've done in the past? Well, it, it is tough, but you've got to give a lot of credit to the other hockey teams. Uh, when we played Pittsburgh, Dion just played unbelievable. You can't say enough about him. And, uh, you know, we didn't seem to be skating in the, uh, the first two series, and passes weren't sharp. But tonight looked like we're starting to get it back, and we're starting to roll again. You knew you were going to play Pittsburgh for quite a while, and I guess you, uh, you could have predicted you might play the Rangers as well. Quebec, though, is a bit of a surprise. Does that mean a little more preparation very quickly in the, in the past three or four days? Well, really, no, nothing is a surprise in hockey. Uh, Quebec always played well against Montreal in their own building and in their building. You know, it's like a feud we have with the Rangers. And we figured it was a toss-up series. We, we give Quebec a lot of credit. We said if they got good goaltending, they might beat Montreal. And from what I hear, they got very good goaltending, and uh, they come out ahead. And the same thing with Boston. It was a toss-up. You could have picked up a coin and flipped it between the two teams. What was the reaction in your dressing room when Edmonton bowed out in the first round and went, uh, not at the moment, uh, because you still had a tough series with Pittsburgh. After you got by them, though, Edmonton's gone, Montreal's gone, and they figured to be your two uh, toughest opponents. Well, you know, a lot of people make bad predictions because everybody's tough, because Pittsburgh could easily beat us out. It's the type of thing, a, a lot of teams that further down the ladder come into the playoffs, they really have nothing to lose. All they got to do is go out there and play their heart out. And if they lose, Everybody says, well, we expected them to lose. If they win, you know, everybody says, geez, they're hot. They're really going well. So it's tough because every, when you're in playoffs, it's a whole new series. And some teams get great goaltending at the right time, and that's what counts. So you're taking nothing for granted, uh, this series, uh, the next one, whatever. No, it's one game at a time, and we've got to keep playing good hockey. And let's face it, Quebec is an explosive hockey team. Uh, we know it during the year. We had a couple of 10-10 games with them. So we know they can score, and we know they're free wheelers. So we're not taking any first thing for granted against them. Some fine saves tonight, and uh, somebody, I think maybe even you, said the greatest save ever on railroad to Lanin in game six against the New York Rangers. Congratulations on your performance. Mm -hmm. Billy Smith of the New York Islanders will return with Stanley Cup 82 in just a moment. Presumably there's room for another Stanley Cup pennant uh, hanging high above the Nassau Coliseum and the Islanders took uh, another step toward a third straight Stanley Cup with this victory in game one of the Prince of Wales Conference Final. Game number two will be here between the Nordiques and the Islanders on Thursday night and we hope you'll be with us for that one at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Quebec down a game coming back Thursday to try to even it up. We bid you good night from Long Island. Canada brought to you by Molson Brewers of Molson Export it keeps on tasting great Canadian General Electric Canadian Tire where you'll find a lot more than tires and by Ford of Canada at Ford quality is job one right down the line This program is protected by copyright and is intended solely for the entertainment and enjoyment of the viewing audience. Reproduction by any means, in whole or in part, without the express written permission of Hockey Night in Canada is prohibited. 
Hi, this is the old redhead, Red Story, inviting all you hockey fans to join the next Hockey Nights in Canada on Thursday night as the race to the wire on Stanley Cup 82 continues.